accept that. Um, is that with the one here? Uh, yeah, that's with that wireless mouse. Okay, we'll, we'll take care of it. Yeah, there's, so there's going to be, there should be one, and there's going to be a follow-up one after that. And perfect, that's it. Okay, all right. Good morning, everybody. The uh, planning commission meeting for uh, December 10th, I'd like to call it to order. Uh, if everyone would please join us in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, the minutes from the uh, November 5th special meeting. Um, I will make a motion to approve the, uh, the minutes from the November 5th meeting. I'll second. Okay, I guess we don't, okay. oh yeah, we do, okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. We have to do a roll call vote on that. Um, Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown? I'm not here. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Thank you. All right, that was fast. That was, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always. Okay, and our next item is up for 9.05, so we have a few minutes. Does anybody have anything else they wish to discuss that we can legally discuss before the time? No? Okay. <laughs> nice try. Do we have people in the chambers today? We, we have, do. We do. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. With the uh, current amount of seating, I'd say we're um, at least a third packed. Oh, what do you know? Nothing like sitting here watching the clock. It's so early in the morning. <clears throat> I would like to mention for all you here in the audience, in case you haven't been paying attention to how they're operating uh, in this current time. Between speakers, we are disinfecting the countertop there and the microphone and whatnot. So um, 
don't be in a rush to rush up to the microphone. Not that anyone usually is, but. All right, 905. First item is a public hearing on consideration of a tentative parcel map PM 18-02, a deviation DV 18-01, major use permit UP 19-5. 57 and a mitigated negative declaration IS 18-68 applicant is Tigit Meyer Associates proposing to subdivide one parcel into four parcels the proposed parcels would be plus or minus 3.58 to plus or minus 8.23 acres in size the location is 52 Soda Bay Road Lakeport and further described as APN 008-001-25 do we have any staff making any kind of presentation on this? Yeah, so Satir is in conference room C, and um, she is right there. And they're muted. Audio check, test one, test one. Can you hear us? Yes. Good morning, Takara. We can hear you. Good morning. Thank you so much. Takara. I'm for being a bit late. We're having tech issues. Good morning. Uh, I'm Satir, uh, the assistant planner. Uh, <laughs> okay, so for today's agenda, we're uh, going over. Uh, wait, where's the, pre the presentation? Um, you need to share the presentation. I've given you co-host. I don't know how you logged into the computer there, um, but you should be able to navigate to your share drive and pull it up, and then you should be able to share screen as well. Where's the planning commission? Uh, it's on the E-Drive for the E-Planning Division, EC Presentations 2020. Planning? Planning Division, mm -hmm. EC Presentations. Do I just drag it? Just open it in there. You can you should be able to start it from there. Yeah, if you found the PowerPoint application or program that or sorry, the um document just go ahead and open it up and then um, once you open it go back into zoom okay and then at the bottom of the window you should see a green button that says share screen with an up arrow okay and then go ahead and click on that and then it'll pull up another window oh it looks like you're getting it okay and just press this so from there just start the presentation and you should begin okay Okay, so for today's agenda, uh, we will be going over the following site description, uh, project description, uh, project analysis and recommendation and conditions, and uh, end with any public comments and questions. So the site description, the 26.1 acres uh, project parcel is located on Soda Bay Road in Lakeport, California. 
The area is bounded by residential, commercial, and light industrial development to the northwest, the north, west, and south, uh, rural fields to the north and south, and Manning Creek, uh, Wood, Dense Valley, Oak, uh, Oregon, Ash, Riparian, Canopy to the east. A vineyard resides approximately 50 feet beyond Manning Creek to the east. The project site contains, un, um, contains approximately 8.61 acres of developed land, primarily composed of paved and unpaved uh, parking areas, drive-in, and buildings, which is uh, indoor movie theater and projection booth. The applicant is requesting approval of a tentative parcel map with deviation on the proposed parcel not meeting the length to width ratio per county zoning ordinance development standards. Per county subdivision ordinance uh, where such lots are allowed, the, the street frontage of each panhandle axis shall not uh, be less than 20 feet wide and the panhandle axis shall not be no more than 300 feet long. Each panel a panhandle exceeds the length, uh, one, being non-conforming and existing, and two, access way to the drive-in and such land division should not, I mean, it would not be feasible due to the existing structure to shorten the length to meet the panhandle requirement. The applicant is requesting approval of a major use permit to allow it the division of one parcel, approximately 26.1 in acre size into four lot sizes within an area of zone floodway fringe. According to the tentative parcel map, the applicant is proposing the four lot uh, as shown in the table and the tentative map is on, on the next slide. So in this parcel map, uh, the applicant is, does not just uh, propose any developments um, on this parcel at this time. Okay. So the uh, staff reviewed the project uh, for concurrence with uh, the Lake County General Plan, um, Lake, uh, Lake Port Area Plan and Zoning Ordinance. Uh, staff determined that this uh, project is consistent with the above. And I'll explain that. So for goal uh, land use for the, the existing commercial service Structure will remain on site for the continued use and remain consistent with the policy. Okay. Um, goal uh, land use seven, the donation of the wetland area to the Lake County uh, Land Trust would preserve and protect a valuable natural resource for its uh, water quality, plant and animal habitat and character. In addition to this, the parcel uh, proposed parcel or so four will be mapped as unbuildable land, which is ideally imposed uh, a higher degree of protection for valuable natural resource from degrade, uh, degradation. Uh, the Lake County General Plan uh, goal, wait, no, that's a good part, sorry. The parcel map would allow special protection through the donating and de uh, designating uh, a valuable natural resource, the wetland as unbuildable to the uh, Lake County Land Trust. The zoning ordinance, uh, the proposed lot size range from 3.42 acres to 8.20 acres. Each parcel meet a development standard set forth in Article 27 with the exception of the requested deviation due to the panhandle on the northwestern end. The panhandle would not meet Article 20, uh, Section 20.13 under the development tool standard to, uh, for the length to width ratio of 3 to 1. Therefore, a deviation is needed. In addition, the lot with the panhandle will be marked as unbuildable lot used for wetland preservation as it will be donated to the Lake County Land Trust. Typically, a major use permit is not required for a minor subdivision. However, a minor use permit is required pursuant to Article 36, Section 36.5E and uh, Floodway Fringe Combining District for subdivi uh, subdivide 
subdividing resulting in three or more parcel or lots. The project proposal does not involve construction nor future development at this time. All future development shall adhere to all, uh, all federal, state, and local agency requirements. In addition, the waterway combining uh, districts would and wetland allow mitigation measures to be implemented during or prior and during any future developments occurring on the property. The proposed tentative parcel map has uh, been prepared by the, a licensed surveyor and meet all requirement outlined in chapter 17, section 17.6 of Lake County Code. All necessary improvement are shown in a tentative map prepared by Steve Bella, uh, Concert Surveying Lakeport, California, and received on March 3rd, 2020. The parcel, propo uh, parcel proposed uh, meet all development standards requirement in the service commercial zone in terms of shape, size, shape, uh, width to depth ratio and the ability to, uh, for each parcel to serve uh, what's vital utilities, water septic, power and road outlined in section 1723. However, a division is required to meet the development standard requirement for the uh, width to depth ratio of three to one for the panhandle of uh, parcel two and four. And some Photos. This is an existing uh, movie theater, and this is on lot one. And this is the north or western portion of lot one and three boundary line. And this is a the one of the easement, um, one of the Panhandle entrance uh, drive-in movie theater on lot two. And this is the drive-in facing north on lot two. The deviation does not consti uh, constitute a special privilege for the developer. The parcel conforms to all development standard of Article 20 of Lake County Zoning Ordinance. However, due to the configuration and existing panhandle, uh, panhandle of the initial parcel located on proposed uh, lot four, it does not conform to the development standard and the existing structure makes it difficult to reconfigure the parcel any other way, thus causing a disadvantage for any possible division or reconfiguration. The develop, developer would find it this difficult to divide the lot on a parcel with existing structure with specific purposes to serve within the lot that is divided in the way it is proposed in the tentative parcel map. The existing structures would not make it feasible in meeting the requirement located on lot two for easement to the drive-in. In addition, the existing non-conforming lot is proposed to be a designated remi remainder donated to the Lake County Land Trust for natural wetland pre preservation. The remaining two conforms to all development standard and will be used for lots. The proposed project cons uh, consists of a subdivision of a commercial zone parcel and the uh, project is not proposed to be detrimental to the health, safety, morals, comfort, and general welfare of the, uh, the person or property. The proposed pro uh, parcel meets the adequate size and shape as described in the county ordinance zone service commercial development standards with the exception of to the shape located on the parcel lot two and four. Therefore, a deviation is needed for the proposed project. A, the parcel map have been reviewed and commented for adjustment by various agencies to provide reasonable ad adequate accommodation to easements, roadways, and other circulation means uh, within the tentative parcel map. The parcel map would not adversely affect any public services provided by various agencies such as Special District, Environmental Health, PG&E, or the Fire District. There are no known violations for the following chapters. The California Environmental Quality Act requires agency to evaluate the environmental implication of land use action. An initial study and a mitigate, uh, mitigated ne negative declaration was prepared and circulated for public review uh, in compliance with secret from 7 8 2020 to 8. 2020 uh, comments were received and addressed accordingly. Such 
as no comments from agencies or adverse um, comments from any agency. Revisions to the tenor of the map um, came from the county surveyor. See attachment um, six for that. Uh, additionally, the local tribe were notified for the project on January 1st, 2020, and did not receive any uh, comments regarding the project. The initial study found that the project could cause uh, potential significant impacts to air quality, biological resource, cultural resource, uh, uh, tribal cultural resources, um, geology, hydrology. However, with the incorporated uh, of the mitigation measures below all impacts would could be reduced when uh, development uh, is proposed. The property is not within the state responsibi uh, responsibility area and is under the jurisdiction of the Lake Port Fire Protection District. The district has reviewed the proposed land division and had no adverse effect uh, comments. The proposed proposal is consistent with these fi uh, required findings and find it not to be non-applicable to the location. The staff recommends the approval of tentative parcel map PM 1802, major use permit 1957. Um, Initial study 1868 uh, and deviation 18-01 with the following findings listed in the staff report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll uh, go ahead and open it up to public comment. If anyone in the public would wish to comment on this item. I don't see anybody oh. moving in the chambers. Do we have anybody? Oh, we do, I'm sorry. Be sure and state your name for the record, please. My name is Steve Bell. I represent Contour Land Surveying and we are providing uh, Mr. Tagemeyer with the parcel map. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them, if okay. possible. Okay, thank you. Steve Bella, B-E-L-L-A-H. Thank you. Commissioner Senator, and this is Scott DeLeon. Yes, Scott. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good like morning. To thanks, like to thank Satur for her presentation. Um, she mentioned something a few slides back, and I just wanted to... Uh oh, there we go. I, I wanted to uh, just elaborate a little bit in it and perhaps offer some additional explanation. Um, we've been working with Mr. Bella uh, uh, regarding parcel four, uh, on the map, you'll notice that uh, parcel four is the area where the majority of the wetlands are, and uh, it's the uh, the owner's intention to uh, ultimately um, uh, get that piece of property to uh, the Lake County Land Trust. Uh, the property is largely uh, wetland. Uh, it's um, largely undevelopable. And uh, what we've recommended is to actually designate parcel four uh, as a designated remainder uh, so that it would um, not be subject to some of the development standards that other, the other parcels uh, would, uh, would be required to have. For instance, sewer and water, uh, parcel four is not to be developed. Again, it's uh, intended to be uh, transferred to the land trust uh, at, at uh, a future date here. And so we're, we're actually uh, going to be working with uh, the surveyor to call that a designated remainder. Um, uh, there will be a condition, conditional certificate of compliance that le will be required. And I believe Takara has a, um, some, a recommended condition to be added 
but we feel that um, that it it uh, is a, a better uh, way of accomplishing uh, what the goal here is, and that is to uh, ultimately get this uh, uh, piece of property uh, donated to the land trust. So. Um, uh, if you have any questions about that, we'll be happy to try to answer them. Again, we've been working with Mr. Bella uh, and with Gordon Haggett, the uh, county surveyor, and um, uh, it's just a, uh, uh, a better option. Is that property going to have, it's still going to have an access off of the... Oh, wow. Sorry. The, the property will the the the, uh, the property boundary as is shown on the map is not going to change. So it, it would have a, a, a frontage on uh, Soda Bay Road, uh, but uh, the property the certificate of compliance is going to ensure that it's uh, it, that it's not developed. Right. Okay. Okay, Jake, did we have somebody who was trying to speak from the Zoom? Uh, we might have had some there. Uh, we did get some interruptions, so I did have to mute them really quick. Um, we do have somebody from, uh, got, it's kind of representing Lakeport Cinema. He has his camera shared right now. Okay. Uh, but we do have an individual who is... Um, motioning that they would like to speak here. Looks like uh, uh, Mustafa uh, Owaida. He is unmuted, but I am not hearing any audio from him. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I will uh, send another a meet request out to the floor. Uh, that request is out. If you'd like to make a comment, please unmute and state your first and last name. Did the representative from the theater wish to speak? Uh, he did mention that he was available to um, answer any questions. questions. Okay. Okay, I got mine fixed. Can I ask questions? Uh, yes, hi, we can hear you. Can you please confirm your first and last name? Mustafa, how I got? Hi, yes. Hello. Okay, so we, we just recently bought the property at 7050 East Highway. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mustafa, I, I merged your video with your audio and I unmuted you again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I did send him another unmute request. Way to go, Jake. I, I know. <laughs> you might just be going. Uh, Mustafa, I'm sorry. If, if you could hear me here, um, I did mute you again at the start of your discussion. Okay, this is uh, a little frustrating. Can we text him or something like that? Or? Yeah, is there something else we can, to get? He mentioned Highway, it sounded like he was mentioning Highway 29, so I'm wondering if he's even, if he's on the right, right um, item. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same thought, Daniel. I hate to try and move on when we know somebody's trying to speak, but we do need to try and get this clarified, I think. Uh, I'm trying to get his attention with the funeral lords here. Okay. I'll try and be patient. No other speakers in the meantime? 
Uh, no, we don't have anyone here. Yeah. You guys don't have any questions for the uh, for the landowner or the the firm representing him. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm sorry, I don't. Can you call me again, this number? Uh, it looks like we could hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Perfect. No. So, 7050 East Highway 20. That is close to the property or to the permit. The, the address for the property with the permit. Okay, um, Mustafa, you're, yeah. if you can hear me. You're actually, we're not on that item yet. Um, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, okay. I, I believe that's Sorry probably the Draper. That's, I think, item number three, and we're currently on item number one. Perfect. I'll just be quiet until you get to number three. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so seeing no more comment, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and close it. Anything else from the commission or any wishes that the commission would like to do, say? If my commissioner, no, you're okay, John? Yeah. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion. All right. Okay. I move that the planning commission find on the basis of the initial study IS 18-68 prepared by the planning division and the mitigation measures which have been added to the project that the parcel map PM 18-02 as applied for by Tegmeyer Associates Incorporated on the property located at 52 Soda Bay Road, Lake Fork, California, 95453, APN 008-001-25 will not have a significant effect on the environment and thereof recommend that the Planning Commission approve the proposed mitigated negative, negative declaration and mitigation monitoring reporting program with the findings listed in the staff report dated October 22nd, 2020. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Can we do a roll call vote, please? Sure, Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion carries. I move that the planning, oh, in regards to major use permit 19-57, I move that the planning commission find on the basis of the major use permit UP 19-57 prepared by the planning division that the parcel map PM 18-02 as applied for by Tegmeyer and Associates Incorporated on property located at 52 Soda Bay Road, Lake Fort, California, 95453 APN 008-001-25 does meet the requirements of section 51.4 of the Lake County Zoning Ordinance and the major use permit be granted subject to the conditions and with the findings listed on the staff report dated October 22nd, 2020. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Sure, Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, in regards to parcel map PM 18-02, I move that the Planning Commission find that the tentative parcel map PM 18-02 applied for by Tegmeyer Associates Incorporated on property located at 52 Soda Bay Road, Lakeport, California. APN 008-001-25 is in conformity with the, with the provisions of the Subdivision Map Act in Chapter 17 of the Lake County Code in the Lake County Zoning Ordinance and upon that basis approve said map subject to the conditions and with the findings listed in the staff report dated on October 22nd, 2020. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion carries. I move that the deviation applied for by Tegmeyer Associates Incorporated on property located at 52 Soda Bay Road, Lakeport, California, 95453 does meet the requirements of Section 17-31 of the Lake County Subdivision Code and grant the 
deviation to make an exception to the panhandle of proposed lot size to meet the development standards of the service commercial zone and therefore the deviation is approved with the findings listed in the staff report dated October 22nd, 2020. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. And Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion shall carry. Okay, I'd like to note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the subdivision ordinance provides for a 15 calendar day appeal period. If there's a disagreement with the planning commission, an appeal to the Board of Supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the 7th calendar day following the commission's final determination. Okay, moving on to item number two. This is a public hearing on consideration of a rezone RZ17-01 general plan amendment GPAP17-01 a parcel map PM17-01 and initial study IS17-31. The applicant is Richard Whitney Brand proposing a rezone general plan amendment and tentative parcel map to subdivision APN013 dash 028 dash 18 into four parcels. Currently the parcels are split zoned and the applicant seeks to rezone APN 013 dash 028 dash 81 to become completely within the rural residential zoning district and rezone APN 013 dash 028 dash 82 to be completely within the rural land zoning district. The location is 23987 and 24073 State Highway 29 Middletown, California. 95461, APN 013-028-81 and 013-028-82. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Eric Porter here, Associate Planner. Um, I've got a couple of minor housekeeping items that pertain to this file before we launched into it. Uh, first of all, in talking to uh, uh, Scott DeLeon and Takara Thomas this morning, we realized that one of the uh, concerns raised by a neighboring property owner pertained to potential soil toxicity due to an older uh, mercury mine that had been either on the site or in the vicinity. I'm not clear on the exact location of the mine. Uh, we're recommending that a additional condition of approval, HYD-1, he added that requires a well quality test be performed prior to recording the final map. And if toxicity levels exceed safe levels, an alternative potable water source shall be submitted to environmental health and community development for consideration and acceptance. Scott, did I uh, cover the wording right? Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. All right. Hey, Eric. Yes. This is John Hess. I have a question about that um, language. Is that, does that mean that um, although this ha property has been developed and there are dwellings on it, uh, such a test has never been conducted before? Well, this came up very late in the process. Oh, right, I, I realize that. But I'm, I'm, in prior years, as development occurred, that such a test was never considered necessary before? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Okay, uh, the other item has to do with uh, the way the motion is worded for the parcel map. It, it essentially tells the planning commission that you can approve it without it going to the board of supervisors. That's actually not correct because of the zoning. Uh, so the recommendation then would be to recommend whatever the uh, commission recommends to the board because it can't, it can't actually be uh, divided until the zoning uh, rezone takes place. And so rather than approving or denying or whatever uh, decision you reach, you would make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors concurrently to the general plan amendment or rezone. So having said that, um, what we have is two properties. We have a 35 acre and a 40 acre uh, property that the applicant wants to rezone a portion of to RR in order to create lots that are five acres, uh, just over five, which is allowed in the RR zone, but it's not allowed in the RL zone. 
Uh, there are currently two houses that exist on the property. There's an internal gravel driveway that varies in width from 14 to 16 feet. Uh, that would need to be widened internally because it's shared by other properties that are further south uh, west of the property. Um, Caltrans is weighed in. They have some um, requests that found their way into conditions of approval to where the uh, encroachment needs to be improved. So that should be within the conditions, but I'll cover that in a minute. Getting back to the property, uh, uh, water source is served by two existing wells. There's an on-site pond, uh, presumably used for irrigation. Uh, the result of this action would result in uh, four new parcels and the uh, remainder parcels that are already present, but that would be smaller. If you look on page uh, four of your staff report, it talks about what the general plan designations are and what they would be. And the actual lot sizes are identified on page three uh, of the proposal. Um, again, this requires a general plan amendment and a zone change for the portion that would be uh, creating the smaller five acre lots. Well, they're not five, they're varied in size, 8.9, 5.0, 9.5, and 5.9 acres respectively. Uh, those would effectively be rezoned to RR, which does allow uh, lots of that size. So we received two public comments. Uh, one pertained to a letter from Caltrans that was not part of the record. And I need to add that in verbally as being part of the record. Uh, the letter is from Saskia Reimer Burnett of Caltrans dated August 20th, 2020. And it essentially talks about uh, the private road, uh, the state of the existing internal driveway, site distances are exceed a thousand feet in each direction, which is fine. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, they indicate that the relatively small scale project will have a less than significant impact. Um, they do have a couple of recommended comments uh, they recommend improving the road approach from the highway, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> uh, and the road approach needs to be brought up to current standards for commercial multifamily driveway because it would be serving potentially up to eight dwellings if they build out. Um, They recommend that the current mailbox locations be moved because they are apparently in conflict with the approach. And uh, any work done on the Caltrans right away will require an encroachment permit from Caltrans. <clears throat> so with that said, I'm not quite sure what else I can tell you about this project, uh, unless you have any specific questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Eric, I have a question. This is John Hess again. Yes. Are you familiar with Mr. Hall, Robert Hall's um, green sheet? It was, he'd intended to do a PowerPoint, but instead we have it as a green sheet. I've read it. Yeah, he has specific comments about access, about a 16% grade and the monuments um, set back from the road. Is that consistent with what you just described from Caltrans? Do those two does Mr. Hall's concern and what Caltrans would require, do those mesh? I can jump in on that. This is Scott DeLeon. Um, Hi, Scott. Uh, condition, um, condition number 12 uh, of the parcel map requires uh, the improvement of the intersection of the road, which is being called Brand Lane uh, with Highway 29 uh, shall be uh, designed and constructed consistent with Caltrans standards uh, for a, a road intersection. So um, uh, we believe that uh, that condition addresses uh, Mr. Hall's concerns about the road access, as well as addressing um, uh, Caltrans's re request and, uh, and their concerns that were uh, summarized by Eric uh, in the letter from Caltrans. So we believe that uh, uh, condition 12 addresses that. Thank you. 
If I may, Mr. Chair, this is Nicole. Yes, Nicole. Um, I think, Eric, it would be prudent to discuss the environmental impacts of this project and how they may be affected by any foreseeable projects. As I'm sure the commission is aware, CEQA requires that when considering impacts of projects, CEQA must also take into consideration the cumulative impacts of reasonably foreseeable future projects. And in this case, that seems to be according to the report at least what staff has done. And I think it'd be prudent that they discuss, staff discuss how the reasonably foreseeable future projects have cumulatively impacted the impact or affected the impacts of this project itself. Um, sure, I can address that. Uh, initial study IS 17-31 was prepared in uh, late 2017 or early 2018. Um, it identified six different categories that have potential impacts and uh, the authors of the staff report and conditions added a number of mitigation measures in response to the potential impacts. The potential impacts are to air quality, biology, cultural resources, geological and soil, um, hazards and hazardous materials, and the one that I added today, which is uh, hydrology. So those six categories have the potential to have an adverse impact based on development. Uh, the two caveats are mitigation measures have been added into IS 17-31 to uh, mitigate the impacts. And also there's no imminent development proposed. So this is all, uh, this may occur if further development happens on the property uh, situations. So I'm not sure if that addresses your uh, concerns, Nicole, but that's the status of the initial study. So the action today would actually um, involve four different things. It would involve the parcel map, adopting the initial study that uh, is IS 17-31, um, making a recommendation to the um, Board of Supervisors for the general plan amendment and for the rezone. So those four actions would need to occur in today's uh, deliberation. Eric, I have another question, John Hess, related to Nicole's comment. Uh -huh. uh, should that, um, that tech toxicity test prove that there is an unhealthy or dangerous level of lead in the water or leaching, uh, who would be responsible for cleaning that up? Uh, the property owner. And it's not so much uh, cleaning up uh, solely, it would also be providing an alternative water source that it doesn't have high levels of toxicity. And um, the concern isn't lead or other, well, mercury is a heavy metal. It has to do with the presence of an old uh, mercury mine in, in the vicinity. Right. So did I say lead? I meant mercury, I apologize. That's okay. It, it's really the burdens on the uh, property owner to mitigate any kind of impacts that are tied to his property. So hopefully the uh, well tests will turn out negative and everything would be fine. Thank you. I did find um, Ms. Brockmeyer's green sheet um, interesting from a semi-historical point of view, but also from a future development point of view. Well, the thing that we're lacking is evidence. And right. You know, I wanted to uh, bring it up that there were two neighboring property owners that had different concerns, make that part of the record, and then uh, address it as best we can through HYD-1, the mitigation measure that I had mentioned earlier, and through uh, condition number 12 that uh, Mr. De Leon had indicated. Thank you. Um, I do want to note that um, Carolyn Brockmeyer indicated she was going to call in, so she may be on the phone. Uh, I have no way of knowing that from where I sit. Uh, Bob Hall, I think he's participating, but I'm not sure. Yes, he is. Okay.
Oh, I do have another question, Eric. Okay. And, um, and I'm, I'm very glad to see Gordon Haggett here today. Thanks for, for attending. Your, your input's always really helpful. I recall another issue. I think it might have been off Hofacker Lane a couple of years ago where it was the issue about a gate at the entrance. And that got very thorny about um, just how that works. And um, I don't mean to presume, but we have some commissioners who weren't part of that conversation or the Valley Oaks complicated subdivision. Could you describe that issue with the gate? Yeah, that's uh, um, what the applicant is proposing here, I believe, is to have what we, we call a gated access, um, um, which you usually find with major subdivisions, but in this case, um, it can we can allow it in this case. Um, the, the problem with the gated access is uh, if there are people outside of the uh, adjoining properties that need access or have existing access rights over this road that they're proposing, uh, the addition of a gate uh, poses an additional the question comes up as to how how are the adjoiners or the other people outside of this project going to get access to the gate? Are they is it going to be a code, uh, a key? Um, so, if they're given the choice, they can either do a uh, a publicly dedicated road which won't won't have a gate, or the gated access, which I believe is what they want. Um, so in that case, we've got a, we added a condition in there. I think um, we took out condition number four, which allowed for the for the public access, and um, amended condition number ten, which gives them a choice of either the public access or the dedicated uh, the gated access verbiage. Um, and there's different conditions that go along with each. Um, at the end of that condition number 10, we added a, uh, I haven't got it in front of me, but basically we, we put it on the applicant to, um, to notify uh, people that have interest in that, in that roadway and to get their comments about the gated access. Um, and then we also added an indemnification clause for the county because um, uh, we, we, we can't monitor this, really. Um, right. it, it's going to be up to the applicant to provide this. What, what the county doesn't want to get involved in is uh, um, <coughs> trying to figure a way to get out of a, a potential lawsuit if... if uh, one of the adjoiners either can't, is unable to use a gate, or, I mean, there's a myriad of reasons um, that go along with, with a, gated, a gated road. So. If I may, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Higgins, Higgins, if you were, is this Nicole, if I may? Uh, I have two sets of language here. I have the language that in front of me for the conditions that were posted on Granicus for the commissioners and for the public to read. And I have another um, set of conditions that have the language that Mr. Haggett is referring to. I do have some concerns about the, the second set that um, had the additional language. Um, and I, but I think if we are going to change the conditions, we should be clear here today and read out what those changes are and which condition number it is. I will say as far as easements go, uh, the county does not, does not enforce private easements. So it would be the responsibility and the obligation of the project applicant to ensure that the easement rights are not violated, uh, are not interfered with through the life of the easement. So I'm still unclear as to what the changes in number 10 are intended to do. And if we could clarify that here, that would be best. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it, this gets into the, 
the legal the legal ramifications and the legal weeds, I guess. Um, uh, I added that in there uh, as a <clears throat> as a precaution to uh, protect the county. Uh, but if 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 council feels that it's unnecessary, then I mean I I I have no problem with that. Um, it's just that. Um, like I say, it's going to be hard for the county to monitor the people that have off-track uh, rights over that road and getting through the gate. I appreciate your explanation, Gordon, just because this is exactly what got kind of thorny and confusing when it came up on another application a couple of years ago. It, there's in a county's authority, it only, only goes so far, and then a lot depends on understandings between the people that live on and around the property it's 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 hard to feel really clear on it and i remember that from last time uh can i make a comment sure go ahead hi uh so the location of if this gate were to be put up would that be like in the entrance um right off the highway correct so wouldn't that be a potential uh, if this zone is uh, within a, a fire hazard that it could cause some kind of potential, you know, problem that the gates couldn't open um, or some some kind of problem. Also, coming into that property, you would have to have some sort of lane uh, in case in the case of uh, having back traffic, um, because you know cars go through there pretty fast. I would say um, I don't know what the speed limit is 55 there. Uh, so you would have to have some kind of turning lane to be able to go in there or, you know, the expandment, like, and that goes into Caltrans, um, you know, whatever they decide is adequate for emergency vehicles as well. Right. The, the, uh, the gate is going to be, it's not going to be right at the, um, um, the intersection of the highway and, and Brand Lane. It's going to be inboard, um, enough to where they, they can uh, build a, a cul-de-sac or a turnaround for people to get backed up and get turned around and get out onto the highway. And that'll all be subject to Caltrans approval. Um, and then as far as, as uh, the access, the, the way the gated easement um, access is addressed is that uh, fire departments, uh, public agencies, um, anybody with any public, uh, public, um, any public agency has the right to use that road. So they'll have to coordinate, if they put the gate up, they're gonna have to coordinate with the fire department uh, and the sheriff's office as to how they're gonna get access if they have to get in there. So that's, that's going to be um, that'll be up to them, and and, and it'll have to be uh, subject to the approval of the, of those two agencies. Right. Gordon, just to clarify what I said before, I understand exactly why you added that language in, in that particular condition, but um, I'm not a lawyer, and if council thinks it's not necessary uh, or it's unenforceable. Um, I haven't, I've only heard you read that language, unlike the conditions that we've got in the staff report, but I understand why you did what you did, but uh, if council advises otherwise, I'm not going to object. No, I, I, um, I mean, I have no objection. That was just kind of more or less of a, <clears throat> of a heads up. Um, if, if things do go awry between the applicant and the neighbors. Right. Just so this is Nicole again, just so I'm clear, this is a private road, correct? With a, with a private easement through the property. Yeah, I'm not uh, up until this point. I'm not, um, I'm not seeing anything that, that indicates it was ever a public road. Um, um, there's been deeds. Uh, I've found deeds for adjoining properties that have had in the, and the, the access, the verbiage for the access is very vague. 
it calls to using an existing um, dirt road from their property out to Highway 29. Um, the location of the road, like I say, it's a, it calls to an existing road. So I, there's a lot of roads out there. I don't know exactly which ones you're referring to. When you say the language is vague, you mean the language of the original easement? Well, the original easement, that's all it says. It doesn't, there's no indication that this has ever been formally dedicated or accepted as a public road. Um, so all the, the, the easements that I've seen indicate that these are, are private easements uh, between the parties. Gordon. And you're concerned that that language is not explicit here in this cir in this circumstance. Are these uh, is that your in, in the conditions uh, under condition 15? Are these the easements you're referring to? Yes, and then I think uh, I had a I had access to the title report for this property, and there was one more um, that was listed. And basically, they um, they refer to, uh, like I say, easements over over an existing road from the property out to the highway. So <clears throat> it, it's typical of the way easements were written back in the back in the '60s and '70s, um, but. Uh, if this, I guess, if this was a public road, uh, was considered a public road for for any reason, then uh, people wouldn't need easements over it. Right, and I do see that you know even on the proposed um, map that they have this gravel road that goes through parcel. It looks like parcel one. And it also crosses parcel three, and I assume that that road goes into the house. Let's see, where did I see that? The house that is on the other parcel that is going to remain in rural lands. Right. And then I do see, I uh, don't know where I found it now, uh, that there are parcels, and that, so I'm assuming those easements apply to the parcels of property that are in behind even that property is that well and and that's where it gets vague i mean uh, right. the applicant um the brands own the adjoining parcel to this parcel being developed right but what about the ones behind there right there's two other properties um i can't one one is brockmeyer and then there's another um person absentee owner that owns a six, a six acre parcel that adjoins the brand parcel. Mm -hmm. as, as far as this, as this driveway or roadway that you're seeing on the, on the tentative map, as far as that being the road that's, that's referred to in the, in some of these old deeds as the old, uh, as an old um, uh, existing road, I can't say like I say, there's there's roads. Uh, I can't say for sure that this is the road that serves those back parcels, other than Brands. Can you can you hold on a second, Gary? Are you Mr. Brand? No, I'm the representative. Okay, um, so we do have a representative here, and he ha I see he has a, some maps and stuff. It, do we have some questions we want to direct towards him? No, okay. Well, I was just thinking, Daniel, I mean, in, if he has any responses to the questions we have asked or what counsel or Mr. Haggett have said, um, that might be interesting to hear, but this is very familiar what Gordon is describing from something right. we confronted a couple of years ago. I remember that project. Yeah. And we don't wanna certainly get into a situation where we create the problem that was created with that property. Do you have anything you might be able to clarify for us? Um, do we want to, and, and you are? Uh, I'm Robert Hall. Okay. And I, I'd like to clarify some of the discussions I made. 
Okay, and are you, you are with the surveyor? No, I'm a property owner on Roberts Road, which one of these roads you're talking about. Okay, uh, we haven't opened up public comment yet, so, but we will get to you. Um, maybe could we have you come up to this other table here? Do we have the microphone is working? Okay. No, oh, go ahead and come up to the, sit on that, <laughs> that chair, yeah. And then uh, go ahead and state your name. My name is John Webb. Okay. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Morning. Morning. I prepared the applications for the Brand family that are before you today, and I'm their representative here today. Okay. Um, real quickly, the, the whole reason behind this is they're creating four parcels on their property because they have three grown children who are now all married and also have kids. They all live on the property now. So the reason behind the subdivision is to pr create parcels for each of the kids. And the fourth parcel is a parcel that contains all the vineyards. So that being said, um, the gate, where the gate is, where it's gonna be, is at least about 100 feet from the highway presently. So there's ample room in there to improve it. We have to put in some sort of a hammerhead turnaround, a cul-de-sac for the uh, fire requirements and the public works requirements. Uh, the water has been tested on the property. Uh, there is no mercury in the water. They're raising six grandbabies there. So I know they are very sure that there's no mercury in the water. Uh, and, and they do have then the tests that they could uh, provide probably that. Yeah, they results. do or they can retest it. Uh, the, the mines, the old mines are not on the, the property being subdivided. They're on the back property that the um, parents, Richard and Gail Brand, where they live. Um, so, but the water has come out very clean. Um, regarding access and the easement, there, besides the subdivision property, these four parcels, which will be the children, the parents' property in the back, parcel 82 uses the same easement. And then there's one other property that's not part of the family, not associated, that uses that easement. Uh, that property, it's an absentee owner, the property's not developed. Um, I think there's been some issues amongst the property owners using that road. But I think that, as we've talked with staff, that's more of a civil issue, um, not really a part of what we're doing here today. So, um, well, one of our concerns is creating an issue down the road where, uh, and I, I'm not sure, maybe Gordon can speak on this, but about creating properties without access that currently have some sort of deeded access. And we don't want to create a situation where either the owners, current owners, future owners, and or the county might get in some kind of a legal battle over where this easement is because if it is a deeded easement you know regardless of any of the, the relationship between the various parties that easement I, I believe should be honored well because uh, Richard and Gail Brand own both properties right now there's technically no easement back and forth to them that's not necessary there is a one recorded easement, as I said, to that absentee owner. We do show that on our map, and we show that where we believe the easement runs. There was an old road in that area, and that's our opinion of, of where that easement runs. And that's showing up on the map, so again, that's going to continue in the public record. And via the parcel map and recording private easements, all of the new lots and the parents lot in the back will have easements have new easements created for their access okay I, in in our report here it's showing there's five existing easements one two three five and i believe gary you mentioned there is a, another one that you've discovered as well 
Uh, Gordon, I'm sorry, not Gary. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't got it, but it's... There may be utility easements. There are several utility easements. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the one easement I referred to, it's called the 40 foot roadway and public utility easement recorded right. book 826 page 23 that that that's the easement that serves the adjoining neighbor who's not part of the family. And again, that's on our map that's in the record that's in the, uh, the title report. Uh, the, that that easement is fairly clear there. I guess it's the easements. Um, that are described um, and like I say I don't know I don't know what access easement how Brockmeyer gets out or how he accesses his property but there is um, there is an easement described in the in the property for uh, I don't know the uh, the lady that adjoins Brockmeyer and Brand. Yes. Um, that, that that is described simply as a as an access over an existing road from their property out to 29. And like I say, I don't know. I I'm not sure what what road they're referring to. It it's very vague in how it's described. Yeah. But that's I think that's. I mean that so may become that may become an issue. I don't know. I just uh, I, I'd just like to say real quick. I mean I fully understand the reasonings for the rezone, and those reasons are not something that I have a problem with. Uh, again, it's you know dealing with these easements that potentially may exist that I don't feel have been addressed. Um, I'm feeling that. Gordon doesn't feel that they are exist, uh, have been addressed. And I don't know about the rest of the commissioners. Uh, so is there something, we do still need to open up the public comment so we can do that, but um, well, how? The, the easements can't go away, they're there. Right, And so, but by putting in a gate, you may be creating. Well, I think again by, you know. Without the, without all of those property owners, I think being here and present or having, giving us written, uh, not necessarily consent, but, you know, responded in writing that they are aware of what may be taking place. That's a, con you know, just, that's a concern I have. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels. Chair. Yes. This is Nicole. Um, if it's a private easement that we're, or easements that we are discussing, this commission does not have the authority to change those private easements. Right. Even if we had, even if we had neighbors come in to comment about whether or not they, this in this moment that they would approve or disapprove of any decisions this commission makes around those easements, it wouldn't actually change the easements themselves because they are, if they are a recorded document agreed to previously and running with the land, then um, if, uh, as I was saying, if, if, if these are properly recorded in existing easements, then there's really not a whole lot this commission can do to change them. The language provided in the Granicus posted conditions, however, does require as, uh, that the applicant not do anything to hinder or interfere with the rights of easement holders in this case. Okay. Um, I guess I just kind of feel without um, anything from those property owners, I, a fear that I have with this is that, you know, we approve everything as it is. Uh, the brands go ahead and put in the gate and down the road, it starts, you know, um, maybe the landowner that has- Your concern is that if, a, if the, the prop, if the, if someone, anyone puts in a gate along this private easement, that it may come back to the county? Oh, uh, that's kind of my, my fear. 
my concern, I guess, not really well, fear. So well, the county doesn't doesn't have authority over the easements themselves. Okay. The county does not regulate the easements, does not enforce the easements. It's a private property right that the individual who owns that property right would have to enforce it themselves, and that usually involves a civil case. Okay. I think that clears it up mm. for me anyway. Yeah, thank you. I didn't mean to deviate so far, but <laughs> no, uh, okay. I, I felt that issue needed to be raised, and thank you for your input, Gordon. And Nicole. And Nicole, of course. And I'm still happy to help write language for the conditions if this commission would prefer. I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're writing language that is enforceable, that this commission can actually recommend the board adopt. Can I ask one other kind of obscure question, but again, this came up with Valley Oaks, et cetera. Um, and I understand this is basically just a family compound, but aren't, um, isn't an HOA required and CCNRs to be written? Isn't that part of any subdivision? That would be an excellent question for staff. There's a, I believe there's a condition. Um, maybe. Eric may have it in front of him. Yeah, I think there was there, a HOA condition. There's a condition, there's a condition related to CCNRs for uh, ongoing maintenance of the road. Yeah, that's what I was. Good, great. <clears throat> and that's the only one? Okay. Yeah, it would appear, it would appear so. Um, okay. You know, that, that, the, Ongoing maintenance is uh, is certainly a concern, and they need to uh, they need to provide a mechanism for that. So uh, that would be included in a CCR. Uh, any other um, any other restrictions related to uh, housing design um, and uh, things of that nature would would be the responsibility of the developer. Thank you. Do you have any other? concerns that um, that you would want to see addressed in a CCNR. Uh, again, the, the road maintenance is, is the one that we're the most concerned about. No, that speaks to my question. Thank you, Scott. Okay, do any of the commissioners have any more questions for, I'm sorry, what was your name again? John Webb. For, for Mr. Webb. No, oh, but appreciate his comments. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and open up the public comment. Did you have something to say? I'm sorry. Uh, to close out, I'm here to answer any other questions. And I wanted to ask staff, they asked me to bring a, a map today that's to be signed by the uh, Planning Commission Chair and Secretary. I'm not quite sure who to give the map to. Um, uh, it's Planning Commission Chairman needs to sign it and the Board of Supervisors uh, Chairman needs to sign it as well. Uh, assuming both bodies approve this action. Okay. So wait till after the hearing to, okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh -huh. you. Actually, uh, why don't you, I think, are we okay to have him remain seated here until we're, until we're completely finished with this? So in case we have some more questions, <clears throat> is that, um, do we feel that that's a far enough distance from the other microphone? Is everybody, I'm just trying to be safe here. Is everybody okay with it? I mean, if everybody's okay with it, then let's, it's okay. But I don't want yeah, to get in trouble. Yeah, you can just shift about three feet that way. That would be great. I don't want to get, get fired. I'll breathe this way. Mr. Chair, if they're masked, I think that that should be fine for the duration of the hearing. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll open up public comment and we do have, yes. May I go first? Yes, certainly. Uh, be sure and state your name for the record. My name is Robert Hall. I live on Roberts Road. Uh, my wife and I own three parcels on that road. And I asked the chair to grant me more than three minutes to speak because of this road issue. I can provide some historical perspective to that. But um, well, I, I'd like to stick it to the three minutes and then um, we'll go through if we have other comments and then perhaps we'll hear from you again. Maybe. Okay. So I've uh, lived on this road for 47 years. 
1973, there were two residences, and uh, now there are 13. So the traffic on the roads increased a whole lot. And the same problem has existed all that time. And the different meetings and commissions and building inspectors have just kicked this problem down the road. The problem is access from the highway. The, the road we have is 10 feet, six inches wide and 20% grade. In times of emergency, the traffic between incoming fire equipment and fleeing residents creates a choke point and it's a very dangerous situation. Adding two more residents to the property just exacerbates the problem. Uh, the road is sited on both sides by monuments that Caltrans put in back in the 60s. So last Friday I met with Mike Wink, our battalion fire chief in Middletown, and he confirmed that the grade on the road was 20% and the width was 10 feet 6 inches. He also stated that the approach to this property must be two lanes, 20 feet wide each, or I'm sorry, 10 feet wide each. And he submitted an email to the development people for that. Caltrans sent a letter to Mark Roberts. This is the Roberts. This is the letter that uh, was added to the record. It said that we recommend the county require the applicant to improve the road approach to Highway 29 as a project condition. The current driveway does not meet Caltrans minimum standards and needs to be brought up to our current standards for a commercial multifamily driveway with a 20 foot width. Current mailboxes along Highway 29 have to be re relocated. And then Mr. Webb's present here, he sent me an email. And I got his permission to quote this. Attached is a hammerhead detail, as I mentioned. The hammerhead detail confirms the requirement for a minimum of 20 feet. The brands will need to complete the conditions imposed upon the subdivision by all agencies prior to creating these parcels. If they do not satisfy the county, then they cannot uh, get permission to do this. What we ask is the roadway be widened to 20 feet. That it be surfaced and the name remain Roberts Road. Not brand can, late. Can um, we go ahead and see if we have some other people to speak, um, possibly, and then um, if we, if the commission wishes, we'll come back to you. Or do you guys wish to go ahead and give them another? I'll leave it up there to the rest of the commissions. I, I would say just go ahead and continue because I know that we're going to have a couple of um, different people speaking. So if you just want to uh, continue, that's fine. Okay. We'll give him another three minutes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. So as I said, I moved up here in 1973. In 1975, a neighbor, Robert Carmody, uh, subdivided with permission from the county to divide 40 acres into four parcels, of which I purchased two. As a condition of that subdivision, Roberts Road was dedicated to the county from Highway 29 to these four parcels. So somewhere in the records, there's a, there's that dedication, it's a, been dedicated to the county. I don't know why Mr. Uh, the, the surveyor can't, didn't talk about it. The other thing is, is that after that subdivision, that subdivision was approved and the road was established, at that time there were five proper property owners on that road all named Robert. And that's where the name Roberts Road came from. We applied to the county and had that road officially named Roberts Road. Now where Brand Lane came from, I don't know. But in the record of the county, it's Roberts Road. Um, and we'd like to see that continue. Okay, so we have the situation where Cal Fire, Cal Trans say the road's gotta be 20 feet. The name of the road is Roberts Road and that should continue. And as to grading, because of the, the rules, that road, at least from the intersection going to Brand's parcels and ours, it's gotta be widened to 20 feet. In this constriction, this 10 foot width road, there is a blind turn. And 
all of us have experienced near collisions over the years. It's got to be made wider to 20 feet, all the way to the south to the Lacey property. And I say 20 feet because Lacey is currently widening the road to 20 feet. So we have a safe road all the way into our properties. So I'll answer any questions may arise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you wish to respond to that? Yes. Okay. Just briefly, um, the conditions are in the uh, conditions of approval are in there that we have to widen that road to meet fire and Caltrans requirements, and it's we're not changing the name of Roberts Road. Roberts Road is still there, and we're Robert at the edge of Roberts Road into our property. It becomes Brand Lane, so we're not changing the name of Roberts Road at all. Right. I I just I just noticed that uh, something that I wasn't looking at before. Um, thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, I'll ask these questions here in a second. We did have someone else who wishes All right, to speak. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. And we do need to disinfect this, I believe, right? Oh, is there somebody on Zoom who wishes to speak on this item? Uh, it did sound like someone did um, speak there, but I don't see any activity at this time. Um, if you want to move to the Zoom floor, I could send an unmute request out. Uh, it might be Carolyn who's phoning in, who's not on the computer. She's uh, Zooming in by phone only. And who is that? Carolyn Brockmeyer. And she is she a joining for a property owner? Yes. I do know that she doesn't have access to Zoom, but I gave her the phone information, so that might have been her. Okay, did you hear that, Jake? Uh, no, I did not hear that, but I did hear the uh, the name Carolyn Brockmeyer, and I am aware that she is... Um, she may be on, on a phone without um, without being on Zoom. Right, so I don't have any just phones connected at this time. Okay. Okay. All right, we do have someone here in chambers, someone else who would wish to speak. Yeah, go ahead. Be sure and state your first and last name. So my name is Glennis Dunbar. I'm Mr. Hall's wife. I live on Roberts Road. Um, it, it would have been nice if we had a map up to help with some of this um, discussion. So, be, so I don't want to forget, in reference to the water quality question and the past mercury mines, one of the concerns is serpentine soil. And serpentine soil is often indicated by gray pines. We have serpentine soil on our property. It surfaces, it surfaces in the roads, and it's a much bigger question than simply the water quality. And I suppose you address that under air quality, but it is something to be noted on these properties and on, uh, likely on Brand's property. Um, my other comment would be about Roberts Road tees into, we have Brands, we have the highway, and Roberts Road tees in. For Mr. Carmody to make his subdivision in the 70s, he had to dedicate the road to the county. It, it, Roberts Road is considered a county road all the way to the highway. Um, and I don't know if Mr. Haggett's still there, but he could certainly speak to that. So one question I would have is how brands are able to do this subdivision without also dedicating their access road to the county. And it's fine to say this is for a family compound, but we all know over time, any one of these parcels that brands create could be sold so that you then have multiple different property owners. Um, and I think that needs a careful look. Um, my last comment is, if I might, I don't know if you folks have been out there. I doubt it. Um, Roberts Road heads to the west, and we are at the northeast base of Mount St. Helena. So we adjoin Brand's property there to the north, but where we are, just adjoining that, it's very heavily timbered. We're on the north, shady side of the mountain, um, it, you note in the report the fire danger is very high. 
We have evacuated every year for the last five years due to fire, and we got to do it twice this summer. We have horses, we haul a 31-foot horse trailer, and the road needs to be improved. And I would also add, one of Brand's parcels lies on both sides of Roberts Road. And that portion should be brought up to 20 feet width. If any of us farther up Roberts Road wanted to subdivide our properties going through this process, it's my understanding we would have to bring Roberts Road up to 20 foot width. So I think that should happen for the brands. They currently lie on both sides of Roberts Road in this first parcel closest to the highway. I think they plan to build there. They're certainly going to be producing more traffic that would go be crossing the road. So I would ask that you look at that as well. OK, thank you. Um, so I'm looking at uh, attachment eight, uh, page five here, and I'm, this is where I've noticed that uh, Roberts Road, where it goes off to the south. From, excuse, me, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt. Is there any way that we could put that map up there for them to uh, see? That's Jake, gonna be... is there any way we could put a map up? Um, attachment eight, page five? Or staff? <laughs> Well, I'm looking for it now to see if I can find it. So Thank you. Put it up. And uh, yeah, possibly if staff can find it to share it. Um, I don't know how to dig through the uh, the Ledge Star items. Uh, perhaps uh, Eric could help us out. Uh, we're looking for it right now. Takara's got the entire package. I do not. And so. Um, and part of the concerns that were just raised, I think, might be a question for Nicole. Um, and, and what was it you said about about what about it being dedicated or not dedicated? I'm sorry, about easements, you mean? Private yeah, easements? about the easements. Um, about the comment that Roberts, that was forced to be dedicated as a public road and and why this is not being not does not fall into that category uh mr chair my comments centered on private easements um i'm unclear as to what what your question is in relation okay. to this road maybe go ahead gordon maybe i can help out here a little bit roberts road um as is shown on the tentative parcel map <clears throat> was was offered and accepted <clears throat> to the county as a as a public roadway um, back when I'm guessing Mr. Carmody uh, did his subdivision to the south. So that um, and it does um, there's a portion of uh, parcel four that overlaps um, uh, Roberts Road as it comes into Brand Lane. So as far as uh, the access issue goes at the intersection of Brand and, and uh, Roberts Road and the highway, that's all going to have to be designed correctly to try and mitigate any traffic, traffic issues that, that uh, come from as a result of this, uh, this new division. Um, So I don't know if that answers anybody's question. And so the the brand road then is not being required to be offered up as a public public easement, correct, Gordon? <clears throat> the way the the way the verbiage, the language is written for a gated, basically a gated community, is uh, brand lane would be offered for dedication as a public road. The board would reject that offer, mm. but then the board would accept Brand Lane um, basically for access, 
for um, emergency vehicles, 911, any county staff, any public agencies, uh, so on and so forth. And it's, it's stated in that, that if the gate should remain open for, I believe it's, I'm going to say 90 days, then uh, the board will take action to make it a, uh, will accept the offer of dedication that it, that it rejected uh, when the map was recorded and the road will become a public road. Okay. Can I ask a question, Daniel? This is John Hess again. Yeah. Um, I understand the concerns that the halls have presented, and uh, I don't feel as strongly about the name as I do about real, you know, safety issues or ingress and egress. But if the standard is that it has to meet Caltrans and Cal Fire requirements, then isn't the discussion about how wide Roberts Road is moot? I mean, the, the point is it has to meet all required standards for yeah, emergency yeah, no, vehicles, et cetera, to yes, access properties. Yeah, you're correct, John, and I believe that is stated in the in the conditions. Right. Um, I just one thing was, that was just brought up is how Roberts Road was dedicated uh, as a public easement, and how I believe the discussion is going that this this uh, road for this subdivision may not be. But the way I understand Gordon is it gets offered up to the supervisors and then they have the decision whether to accept it or not. And so that is not. Oh, sure. I, I just think that I'm satisfied if the yeah. condition is that, you know, the roads within the subdivision have to meet Caltrans and Cal Fire requirements. I mean, that yeah. includes, you know, treatment of the road and widening, et cetera. I just, I don't want to, you know, without spelling that all out, isn't that what adhering right. to Caltrans and Cal Fire means? Yes. Yeah, and I I feel that all of my concerns have been addressed here. Does anybody have any other concerns they wish or they wish to address? Uh, well, okay, I I, I, <clears throat> I think we need to be very clear on the way this the road dedication for Brand Lane is going to be worded and how it's going to be acted upon. Um, uh, if we put in the verbiage for a gated community, as I said before, the, the roadway will be offered. Um, and if, if, if the uh, planning commission, if, if, if the gated community is gonna be allowed, then the offer of dedication as a public road, in other words, no gate, the public, anybody has access to that road. Then, then that's off the table until the gate remains open. So it's going to be in the final verbiage on the final map, the board is going to have to, uh, the, the verbiage is going to be there to offer it as a public road or to offer it as a, basically a private road <clears throat> um, with, with access by all public agencies. And the board is going to have to decide which one it wants to accept and which one it wants to reject. And that's the Board of Supervisors, mm -hmm. correct, Gordon? Well, um, I suppose, but I think at this point, um, the Planning Commission, uh, we need get, to get some clarity um, uh, as, as to how the condition, I mean, the condition is written either or so mm -hmm. it, it it leaves it up in the air it's it's at the discretion of the applicant basically so the way you mean by that gordon that it's up to them to decide whether they want the gate at all or not well the way yeah the way the conditions is written in number 10 it says the final map shall offer an ir well, shall have an irrevocable offer of dedication of Brand Lane for a, a roadway and a public utility easement, or or a conditional offer of dedication for a private roadway and utility easement, subject to all the conditions that go along with a gated a gated road. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Hadgett, this is Nicole. Uh, would you point me to the paragraph for number 10 where you see the or, please? Well, I, I don't know that it necessarily says or, Nicole, but it says should a gate right. access be installed. Uh, so that above that is referring to it, I believe, not having a gate, and then below that is referring it to as having a gate. Is that correct, Gordon? Well, it's in the it's in the first sentence of condition number ten. Oh yeah, or conditional offer of dedication. I see it there. Perhaps I'm reading the alternate language, but what I see on my number ten from the document that was posted on Granicus originally is the final map shall include an irrevocable offer of dedication of brand lane for a public roadway and utility easement. Oh, there it is. Okay. Or conditional oh, offer of dedication right. for a private roadway and utility easement. So one is decided and then one of the, or the other is chosen and then the conditions following are met. Is that how you're reading that? Yeah, I mean it, it. It it gives them a it it gives the option of either of either the gated road or or an open public road. If they have the gated road, then they have to fulfill all the the conditions. Mr. Chair, can I speak? Um, yes, yeah. we have the. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Webb. John Webb, yes. Mr. Webb. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to mention that the applicants, they do want the gated uh, community. They do the, want to go the gated with the gated road. Yeah, but again, because it is being offered and the county, if they reject the offer now, they have basically till eternity to take that offer back if they if, if right. they feel there's a reason. So. And, and obviously Roberts Road, is clearly says in here, Roberts Road cannot be gated. So um, Correct. we're not not discussing Roberts Road, although the Caltrans requirements all have to be met. Yes, from the highway up to the to the branch property, the approach there, yes. Okay. Um, and I actually have not closed public comment period. We do have someone who wishes to speak again. Can I interject one more thing? Uh, is that Gordon? Yes. Yes, sure. Okay. Number condition number four is kind of a duplication of condition number ten. Um, mm -hmm. So, condi I mean, basically, condition number four speaks to a, a public road with no gated access. So that condition, um, I mean, I, whichever way the applicant wants to go, we should either re uh, remove that condition and just leave it at condition. Uh, 10. Number 10 as it is. Okay. But I mean, subject to all the, all the other conditions for the gated access. Well, condition 10 is certainly more specific and um, contains more language. Um, I'm still a little confused about it. Condition 10 leaves a um, up to the applicant, essentially, as you said, Gordon, and Mr. Webb has clarified that the brands would intend to install a gate. So we're not really, 10 is, a, is an either or situation, but it's not a, we don't have to choose either or as a commission, do we? We would just accept 10 um, as it is. Right. And then, um... So what would the choice be that the, the Board of Supervisors would have to make then? Right. Okay. If I may, I think it hinges largely on what was said earlier about the um, roadway being offered to the county. Correct? Did somebody, somebody had said that, correct? Right. And that language only appears in condition 10. Right. So if it's offered to the county, then arguably the decision would be the county's as to whether or not to accept it. And if it's accepted, then it's a dedicated road, unless I read that incorrectly. Can staff elaborate on that? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? I didn't understand the last part of that question. Okay. So if 
what the previous speaker had said about the road being offered is as I think it means, which is that the, the road will be offered as a public road to the county. The county has the option of accepting it or not accepting it. Correct? Correct. And, if the, and if the Board of Super, Supervisors accepts the offer, then it becomes a public road. So that decision lies with the board in that sense, not with the applicant. If it's being offered, that's how I interpret it, yes. So in the uh, case, number 10 would be considering whether or not the board, considering both options. If the board accepts the offer, then it becomes a public road. And if the board does not, it may, remains a private road and potentially gated, correct? Correct, that's how I'm interpreting how that language is written. Mm -hmm. Right, so, it, so I mean, technically, I suppose, um, uh, the applicant relying on the board We, we, I'm going to need some direction, definitely some definite direction is how to go when I write the, re the memo and the resolution to the board as to um, what kind of an easement is being asked for. If it's being asked, if maybe today it needs to be clear that it, it's going to, uh, the applicant wants to take the action that it's going to be a gated community. That's what they uh, wish, correct? That's correct. It, it appears that that is the wish. Yes, Gordon. Right, stated for the record. All right. Like I say, I've got no issues uh, with the gated community as long as the issue with people that use off-track owners using that road um, are, it, it's, it's either not going to be a problem legally for the county or um, they're, they're fine with it. Okay, that's how I feel on that. Um, we do have one more comment, and um, we'll go ahead and receive that I, I just before want... you have to get up and state your name. Okay. Uh, Gladys Again. Dunbar. I would just like to clarify what I heard in the discussion. Um, unfortunately, the way they took away the map, <laughs> but Roberts Road runs through Brand property. I think it's the parcel that ends in 01. And I think it was said that the roads on brand, the access roads would become 20 feet wide. I want to make sure that applies to the section of Roberts Road that runs through the brand property. Mr. Webb, can you speak to that? Uh, yeah, John Webb. That is not the intention of this application, and there's not a nexus in this application that requires us that I, that I know of to improve um, your road that you use. I think if one of the parcels uses that road and comes in with a building permit application, they will be required, I assume, to build a driveway that's up to the CDF codes and the public work codes. But I don't believe this application triggers uh, the owner's improve brand or uh, Robert's Road, which they essentially don't use at all. Uh, excuse me, sir, they do use it. I'm it, not talking about the whole length of Robert. Ma'am, you need to address the commission. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not speaking about the whole length of Roberts Road. Only I, that. I, I understand what I understand what you're asking, and um, looking at what is written, it. Um, I believe. I'm sorry. I forgot your name again. Dunbar. Webb. John. No, Webb. Mr. Webb. I believe oh. what he's referring to is. The intersection itself is going to be addressed, the intersection of which is Brand, Roberts, and 29. That yep. intersection itself is addressed in this application? That's correct. The piece of, of road from the intersection to the property line is not being addressed. Correct. And um, I don't know that that has any that that piece of land that piece of road from what I can tell does not actually have anything to do with this application correct so if so you, if you look up here on the map you see Roberts Road they've overlaid it with green correct okay Roberts Road continues all the way up to West Hildebrand I understand that okay and crosses through Brand's property 
And Correct. they own both sides of the road through there, and they do plan to build. So you're saying it's not a concern or an issue until they apply for a building permit? So, um, Gordon, can yeah. you? Isn't that, that's the way it works with the, if this is a I, I designated that's, subdivision. That's the way it thought. works, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, that portion of Roberts Road wasn't addressed in the CCNRs as far as road maintenance. Um, uh, I don't know what the condition of Roberts Road is. It's got a dedicated 60 foot width to it. So there's plenty of room to widen the road there. Um, and and then the dedication, you don't have uh, any, um, you don't have the dedication in front of you of Roberts Road from when that took place that, that mentions who is responsible for that, do you, Gordon? Is it, I it's don't. It, I don't have the dedication in front of me. Um, but that's what that would, that would address that, that correct? Not our current project. It, it's possible that it could as far as the maintenance of Roberts Road. I'm, I don't think it's a county maintained road. I mean, I, um, I'm pretty sure of that. I'm, I'm sorry for everybody for dragging this. Dragging this on, but um, I know there have been many times where stuff like this was not addressed properly at the right time, and it's created problems down the road. And I would like to do everything I can to prevent that. So, and there are two uh, blind turns on the brand property on Roberts Road. I don't know who's responsible for the maintenance of, of Roberts Road. The, the offer of dedication, I doubt if that addresses it, um, but it might. It might have been a condition um, for the parcel map to the south. But, but if the if eight one is ultimately developed, um, Gordon, then. Um, the CCNRs would apply to Roberts Road as well, correct? Well, you could make that, I mean, you, that could be a part of the condition that the portion of, of Roberts Road through this, through this development um, is part of this maintenance agreement. Well, part of this for agreement. example, with Valley Oaks, uh, with the construction of the grocery outlet, there um, is currently access off of Hartman Lane um, it's just a two-lane road, and it's a left turn into Valley Oaks. And the condition we imposed was, should there be any further development, and there will be, that the first thing that has to be addressed is that um, that left turn off of Hartman Road. Correct. Yeah, and I mean, that, sure, that could be part of this. Um, if there's no... Um, if it's unclear as to who, who's to maintain Roberts Road, the portion that goes through this property could be included, I would think, in, as far if as... If it's developed, right. As far as uh, the CCNRs go. Daniel, what do you think about that? Because I agree with you about, you know, trying to anticipate future issues and avoid um, later difficulty. Um... Thank you, ma'am. Um, yes, I, I agree, John. Um, are you interested in hearing? We have um, Mr. Hall is asking to speak again. I don't see any. If there was if he no, has some so. original or new input to offer rather than simply restating something yeah. that he said before. Do you, you have something new? Okay. He says so, yes. We're disinfecting and then um, and Jake we don't have anybody from zoom or from any phone calls correct uh, we do not have a uh, zoom or a phone participant um, 
I don't have any hands raised, but people have kind of stopped doing that. Um, if if you, when we have the opportunity, I would like to send a, a mute request to Zoom for as we normally do. Okay, let's hear from Mr. Hall one more time, and then um, I'll ask you to do that before we close public comment. Thank you. I'm Robert Hall on, on Roberts Road. A point of clarification, really. Uh, Richard Brand has told me on parcel one that he intends to build a home for his wife or for his daughter Vicky. And somewhere in these codes I've studied, both Cal Fire and um, Caltrans, there's a statement that says a driveway has to be 10 feet wide if it serves three residences or less. This road, without the Vicky's house, serves 10 residences and it's required to be 20 feet wide. And that's a condition of Cal Fire and Department of uh, Caltrans. So I'd encourage the uh, commission to consider that. The other issue that we touched on, there is serpentine rock on that road. We learned that back in the 70s when uh, neighbors tried to open up a retreat center. Department of uh, Environmental Health came out and said, you have serpentine on this road, it's going to have to be kept. And that development uh, went forward illegally. But I think you should consider whether this road should be kept to keep the serpentine dust down. Thank you. And, and just a clarification, are you referring to Roberts Road or are you referring to brand, the brand? No, Roberts Road. Roberts Road, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, John Webb here. Um, Roberts Road is used by many people. I understand that, but it's very, it's it, it's really limited if it's used at all by the brands. Um, I, I don't see that this application triggers that we, the brands, rebuild this road for everybody up the road that's using it who can't agree on taking care of their own road. Um, Mr. Webb, this is John Hess. Um, yes. If Vicki Brand does live on that property, then the brands would be using that road. And uh, there are requirements about that I raised already about CCNRs in terms of maintenance of the road already. And I would certainly expect that to apply to Roberts Road if that property is developed. I don't see what's unreasonable about that. Well, if the one, yeah, as I said earlier, if, if parcel four is developed, it's currently vacant. Um, but if it is developed, they would have to meet the driveway requirements and maybe more requirements at that time. CDF and Public Works has the ability, I th I'm pretty sure, to impose greater uh, improvement requirements on a driveway that's used by a multitude of users. So at that, that's why I brought up the Valley Oaks example because the Planning Commission did have the authority to require that when further development occurs. Cartman Road must be improved and upgraded. Yes, exactly. So it can and be I'm just and I'm, just, I'm saying out of fairness and it's based on my understanding of the subdivision map act, which is grossly inadequate. I think the same standard would have to apply to Roberts Road. Yes, and, and I agree with you and I would agree with you that it would be on or I should say, in my opinion, it only should be on that portion of the road that they're using. If they even use that road to service to, to access parcel four. There could be an alternative. Well, you said with some certainty before that the brands did intend to development, so I don't really think if applies. Now, there is currently a vineyard on parcel four, is that correct? Uh, no, it's the vineyards are all on parcel three. Okay. Okay. All well, right. the, my, my colleagues may not agree with me, but just I wanted to be clear. That oh, no, that I, be no I, I agree. Theory. I do agree with you, John. Um, and I agree. Uh, Feel that that will be addressed when, when the time comes for that. Yeah, Commissioner Sundrum, this is I, Scott De Leon. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Um, I, I'd like to pin this down today, if possible. I don't want <laughs> to uh, leave it um, up I, to I, my I, discretion as the Public Works Director at such time that uh, <laughs> development occurs on Parcel Four. And what I'd like to propose. Uh, it, and, and I believe this would be consistent with um, uh, what Mr. Webb, I believe is his name, uh, representing the owner, uh, just said. And that is, uh, at such time that parcel four is developed, if access 
uh, to parcel four is obtained through Roberts Road, that uh, uh, the drive in, driveway encroachment uh, and all that portion of Roberts Road uh, from the driveway encroachment uh, to, uh, to Highway 2029 20, be improved uh, to uh, CAL FIRE standards for a road. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it, just real it, quick. It, and, and I appreciate that everyone agrees. And just to be clear, uh, for the neighbors who are, are participating in this, um, uh, they're asking for the, you know, all of Roberts Road through the brand property to be improved. And what I'm suggesting is all that portion of Roberts Road that it would be impacted by a future development of parcel four, which would be the encroachment uh, onto uh, the road uh, for parcel four uh, from that encroachment down to Highway 29 or, or actually be the intersection, I think, with Brand Road, and I don't want to complicate anything, but uh, it would, uh, that portion would be upgraded to uh, CAL FIRE standards for a roadway. Right. That's as far as we felt we could go with Hartman Lane on, um, with, with regard to that turn on Valley Oaks. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't say they had to improve all of Hartman. And, and that nexus agrees, uh, that nexus is there, and, and I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, so for the, the Roberts Road folks, there is, you know, it's a, like we said, it's a 60 foot road, a 60 foot easement that has been dedicated uh, for your use. And, it, you know, if you wish to upgrade, I mean, basically, you own that 60 feet of that roadway um, if you wish to upgrade it. I, I believe that's how that works, correct? Scott or Gordon? Well, if, if I understand everything correctly from what I've heard today, uh, Roberts Road was dedicated for public use. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, not, it is not county, county maintained. Uh, okay. And so the county public works department does not maintain that road. Um, uh, but they would have the ability if they, if the property owners who utilize that road wished to do some maintenance to it, or they wanted to do some improvement to it, uh, they they would have uh, the ability to do that. Okay. I'm not sure that answers your question, but they they do have the the ability to do that. The the um, Roberts Road people, correct people? That doesn't sound correct, but <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay, does anybody else have any other issues? Um, is there any kind of wording that you feel we need to change, Gordon, for for your purpose of sending this on to the supervisors or? Well, it, I would I would be specific on what how they want Brand Lane, uh, if it's gonna be a gated community. Um, okay, so that. That the other option is off the table. And then I would add a condition regarding Roberts Road, the uh, maintenance of Roberts Road, um, that Director De Leon discussed um, as, as a condition of approval to be included with the, uh, okay. to, to be addressed in the CCNRs. I agree with that. And would that mean eliminating condition four at which you had raised earlier, Gordon? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Re removing condition four, and then um, are we striking portions of uh, condition 10 as well, since we are going with the uh, option of a gated? Correct. Right. The, in other words, the irrevocable, irrevocable offer would be removed. Right. Well, basically, the, the offer of dedication has to be has to be it has to be made but in this case the board uh, because they're going for the gated 
uh, uh, the gated access. Um, according to the code, you have to you have to offer public public access to all the parcels. Okay. So that's part okay. of the code. Okay. The gated community language allows you to um, bypass that. You still have to have the offer of dedication, but by saying that you're just going to have the gated community, this tells the board that the offer of dedication for the public roadway will be um, not accepted at this time. Okay, so um, four will get removed and then 10 will go ahead and stay the same? No, well, with I think the language that Scott was talking about that yeah. um, should, at, should that property at one point become developed and the improvements to Roberts Road and the driveway would occur, would be triggered. Well, that goes into the CCNRs though, correct? Right. I would I would include condition number thirteen that addresses CC and R's for Brand Lane. Okay. To address that portion of Roberts Road. Um, how that makes sense at the that thirteen. Portion of, that portion of Roberts Road, and I don't know um, where you want to limit that. Um, 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 for the for the portion, the portion that adjoins um, the boundary of parcel four, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Which would be I the driveway. I yeah, I don't mean to muddy the water here, but I think we're talking about two different things. Um, the, the, the maintenance of Brand Road is addressed in a CCNR, and that's condition, um, 13. Condition 13. Um, the concern raised by the neighbors and, and what we've discussed related to Roberts Road is the improvement, not the maintenance, it's the improvement of Roberts Road mm. uh, to meet Cal Fire standards for a roadway. A at such time that parcel four is developed and, and, uh, and has access onto Roberts. So I, I would probably uh, try to create a, a condition that says uh, at such time that parcel four is developed, uh, all that portion of Roberts Road from Highway 29 to the new driveway uh, for uh, parcel four shall be uh, improved to meet Caltrans or Cal fire standards for a roadway. Okay. So that's uh, uh, just to clarify. Do you just not to clarify, want to provide Scott, for maintenance? that or is it just no i don't i don't no i don't want to saddle the brands with maintenance of roberts road uh i i, I okay. agree that they uh should uh mitigate any impacts that they're going to have to it for uh creating additional traffic on that road uh, as a result of the development of parcel four uh, but i don't believe that they should be saddled with uh the responsibility for maintenance of that portion that that uh I think that would be unfair burden. Uh, uh, they, they're going to go to the trouble of, of improving it, uh, but the rest of those folks that live beyond uh, the brand property that are utilizing uh, Roberts uh, all have maintenance responsibility. Uh, and, and so I, I think, uh, I think uh, by improving it, I think that that would be sufficient. Okay, just want to be clear. And so that would be a, a, a freestanding additional condition then, Scott, rather than a modification to 13. That, that's what I would suggest, yes. Sure, sure. That's, I just, I wanna, I'm just trying to clarify, Scott, any changes we need to make before we uh, go ahead and make the motion uh, in the wording of this. So that's yeah, and, and, and I didn't mean right to now. muddy, again, didn't mean to muddy the water with your discussion about uh, uh, condition number 10. Um, but I just I wanted to uh, to make sure that we weren't uh, kind of commingling things, and and I kind of felt right. like we were getting getting sure. sideways with the maintenance. I I, right. I agree with uh, condition 13, uh, and I would just propose an additional uh, condition regarding the impacts to Br uh, Roberts Road and any uh, development of Parcel Four. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chair, could Go I ahead, suggest John. we? Um, take a few minutes to draft that additional condition and make sure that it's it's it reflects what we've been talking about. And then the motion made would simply refer to the staff report and as amended on this date. 
Right. Mr. And Chairman, Eric Porter here. Can I jump in for a moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Sorry. Condition four anyway. So my recommendation is to provide a new condition four that addresses uh, any improvements to, uh, what is it, lot four, parcel four, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. uh, that would be uh, accessed by Roberts Road rather than Brand Road. And so the wording of the condition that I've drafted, which may or may not be acceptable, is uh, condition new condition four. At such time, parcel four develops, and if access to parcel four is taken by Roberts Road, then improvements to Roberts Road shall be improved uh, to meet Public Resource Code 4290 and 4291 standards, um, as well as the Caltrans approach standards. And it probably ought to include for that portion of uh, parcel four that's benefited by that road. Yeah. I also put down Roberts Road shall be maintained by all owners that use Roberts Road, which probably is not adequate. Well, um, that sh should probably already be in in uh, the current dedication of that road. Right. Should it so not? we can remove that last sentence? I think so. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Um, is, the, is the wording that I gave you sufficient for your purposes today? I think that works for me. Nicole, does that, is that up to par with meeting your requirements? You want to make sure? I'm sorry. Um, so he's reciting 40 Cal Fire standards and so on and so forth. It should it should also address uh, public works standards. If, if they're, I don't know what the difference is, but okay. Um, we okay. want to make sure it complies with the county standards. Okay, okay. I'll add in county uh, public road standards. Okay. Thanks, Eric. I think that's. I think that, that works. That addresses the point. Okay. I too think it addresses the point. Um, I also am pleased. Uh, I think it's a good idea to not include that the last sentence about uh, maintenance. Yeah, if there right. is, if there is already some documentation somewhere that requires the maintenance oh. of the road and creates obligations already, we don't. Uh, we don't I know for certain. We're just sentence. assuming. Um, I had a question about condition number ten, Nicole. You had mentioned. Uh, Possibly removing, I guess we have two uh, different sets of conditions that are floating around, which kind of makes me nervous. Um, did the commission agree to remove the last sentence in condition 10 or, or not? The, um, I don't recall what the, I don't think the commission actually agreed one way or the other on the language. I too have two versions. Mm -hmm. The version I have been reading for today's hearing has been the version that was posted on Granicus. That's the version I'm reading as well. Okay, Me too. And, and the version I have, it um, it ends with the par with the sentences, the conditional offer of dedication may be accepted by the county at such time as the street shall have ceased to remain physically closed and shall have been open to the public travel for a period of not less than three months. It is the obligation of the project applicant to ensure that any existing easement rights are not obstructed or otherwise interfered with as the result of the proposed gate access. All right. That's, that's what I'm reading too. Mine doesn't read that way. I've got an old set of uh, conditions. So, but so the point is that it's this version that the commissioners are looking at that should be amended rather than the other copy you've got, Eric. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just sure, I've got the right set, and I do not. So yes, yeah, so I'll get the right set to make the uh, corrections on. Okay. I've got one more little have... item, item here, and I don't. I, yeah, I'm not trying to beat this thing to death, but but regarding that portion of of Roberts Lane that's going to access Parcel Four. Um, Here's what's probably going to happen. If there's no, the, the owner of parcel four 20 years from now or 10 years from now is going to say, I wonder who's responsible for fixing this portion of the road that I use to get to my property. Is it going to be the county? Um, uh, 
so that's the question that's going to be asked if i think if you don't it if you don't address that portion of road that access is parcel for and of course this is assuming that they would use uh roberts road to begin with um but i think possibly uh, so what we've currently written into the new proposed uh, condition four addresses them upgrading upgrading the easement from from their point of usage back to the intersection. Um, and then perhaps it should be written in there that moving forward with that, that the um, maintenance be shared. I don't know if that's, I mean, the maintenance should already be shared amongst the other, other, um, accessors. If I may, uh, uh, the decision as to, well, we can't speak necessarily to 20 years down the line. <laughs> well, we have to try and think that far that. ahead though. However, uh, the maintenance and care of a road will depend largely on its dedication and uh, previously uh, and previously created agreements uh -huh. or obligations. So if this is a if this is a county road, then the rules that govern county ro roads would apply. If this is a private road, then the ru rules that govern private roads would apply. So I'm not sure what it is we are trying to correct here or what we think that the or, or what the commission is is trying to achieve in adding well, I think another the point that gordon just brought up is if you know if uh is uh, lot four is developed and they decide the developer decides to access the property from roberts road and then down the road it sells and possibly sells again and then maybe sells another time however far down the road you look but a future owner and I think Gordon's point was, you know, the portion, that portion of the road that they're using from their access point back to the intersection is in disrepair. And now they're looking at who's responsible for repairing it, maintaining it. And I think that's what, what uh, Gordon was just, correct me if I'm wrong, Gordon, but I think that's what you were just bringing up. Although I think Nicole brings up a good point that there should already be current standards for the maintenance of that road, and then the new party would just become part of that that maintenance agreement moving forward. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair, this I'm is sure confusing, they, but I'm sure they I thought would. Scott agree. De Leon said that. Um, uh, a la Valley Oaks, that we have the authority to require if access is gained from Roberts Road, that that point from the intersection at 29 to that driveway be um, maintained. And that the point beyond the driveway down the rest of Roberts Road is the mutual responsibility of, you know, whatever property owners use that road. Well, I think, yeah, John, I said improved. I, I didn't say, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't intend to say maintained, I right. said improved. And I think um, there should to, already to be standards. Yeah, there should already Sorry. be a maintenance yep. agreement, though, uh, on that portion of the road. And so the new owner, although they are, they are improving it, then they come into the fold of the maintenance with the, you know, that pertains to the rest of the road. Yes or no? I'm sorry, was that a question for me? Well, uh, possibly. I, I'm just trying to make sure everything is clear about what we're stating. So well, I, mean, I, what... I, I guess what I guess my thought was, um, you know, they're going to be asked, the, the developer of parcel four is going to be asked to improve that road Correct. To, to current fire code standards. Uh, and and to me, the, the maintenance of the road doesn't change. It's it, the we have the same issue today that Gordon is talking about. Uh, the, right. the, the maintenance of that road, uh, and this happens with every public road that gets dedicated to the county where the county accepts the dedication on behalf of the public, um, therein making it a public road. 
but rejects the the offer for maintenance, which is is current county policy and has been current county policy for for many years. Um, we do not take roads into the county maintained system. So uh, the 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 road then becomes a public road with no mechanism for maintenance, and that's what exists on Roberts Road now. And um, and I don't. You know, per Nicole's uh, comments, I I don't think you should you should change that. It 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 already is what it is. Uh, in this particular case, uh, for example, with um, uh, Brand Road, uh, you are contemplating a condition that addresses that that issue and says you've got to do a CCNR that uh, that provides for the future maintenance of Brand Road. So you know, had had uh, that condition been incorporated when Roberts Road was was developed and dedicated, um, then then the maintenance of that road would have been addressed. Unfortunately, uh, it isn't, and and I don't think um, today is the time, or or, it, right. or is it appropriate to make the brands uh, responsible for any portion of of Roberts Road uh, and maintenance. maintenance responsibility Great. for Roberts Road. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Got it. To the other commissioners, do we still have uh, Commissioner Chavez, or did we? Did he fall asleep? I see him. <laughs> still here. <laughs> Are you getting warmed up in your car yet? Um, it's cold in here. Okay, so um, I feel that. Uh, did, does everybody feel that we have what we're looking for here? Is everybody happy? Do we have any more issues? Uh, just a quick question for Eric. So you feel you've got the info or tools you need to rewrite that condition for Eric? We've given you enough guidance. Condition four, I'm fine on. I just want to confirm that the new condition that I had uh, raised at the start of the hearing, HYB-1, requiring a well water quality test is in fact needed. They may already have that test according to what John Webb said. But uh, I just want to confirm that the commission wants me to add that in, that we do need confirmation of water quality. I would like to see that in there, given the green sheet that we received. Okay. Well, it would help address that. Uh, and then the other point of clarification I needed, um, actually it was just an observation. Um, uh, Mrs. Hall's wife, unfortunately I didn't write her name down, but she raised the, the prospect of serpentine soil uh, natural asbestos within the soil, which is very probable in that area. Um, condition number GE01 addresses that. It requires an engineered soil erosion control plan, and they've provided that. So we actually have that uh, on record. So the asbestos issue, in my mind, has already been met with the dust mitigation plan. And that's all I wanted to add at this point. Thank you, Eric. I think all, I mean, not that my own. All of my questions have been answered and addressed. Yeah, it's a, this, this kind of stuff gets quickly complicated, but I think we needed to devote the time to it. Absolutely. All right, I'm just the chair, so, you know, I can just sit here if you guys want to move on or what you guys want to do. Um, it's a district one issue, Mr. Chair, and I'm given all of the clarifications and, and issues we've discussed, I'm prepared to offer a motion. You know, you could have made a motion an hour ago, right, John? <laughs> I don't think we would have been ready then. No, probably if, not, but you still could have made it. <laughs> if I could, well, uh, this is Jake. Yes. yes. Yeah, Jake. Uh, we, um, we were still pending uh, public input from the Zoom room. Okay. Did I, I, did I close? I thought I had closed public comment. I'm not, I'm not sure if you officially closed it. Um, okay. So if nobody recalls, then do we, have, do we have someone who had called in? Uh, I just want to make sure that we didn't miss out on uh, Carolyn Brockmeyer, who was supposed to call in. Um, I just want to make sure she didn't happen to attend via another device. 
I sent a unmute request to the Zoom floor, uh, but if anyone would like to make a public comment, please unmute and state your first and last name. I would ask that it be a new comment and not simply repeating something that's already been stated to the commission. Well, we don't have anybody jumping at the gun, so. Okay. Oop. We have a phone yeah. call. Well, it looks like we did have a phone on mute, but I'm not hearing anybody. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and officially close the public comment. Officially, officially. Well, in that case, Mr. Chair, I'd like to um, offer an, a motion or two. Okay. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission recommend that the Board of Supervisors find on the basis of the initial study IS-17-31 and the mitigation measures identified in the Mitigation Monitoring Reporting Program that the General Plan Amendment GPAP-17-01 rezone RZ-17-01 and tentative parcel map PM-17-01 will not have a significant effect on the environment and therefore recommend the Planning Commission recommend to the Board of Super that the Board of Supervisors approve the proposed mitigated negative declaration and its associated mitigation monitoring report program with the finding listed in the staff report dated November 4, 2020 and as amended today. I'll second. All right. Well, we got a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Can we get a roll? I don't know if your microphone is on or is it? I don't know. I can't tell. It doesn't have a button to control it. So. That's all right. Oh, He's... there you go. I can hear you now. Okay, Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sunrum? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that the Planning Commission recommend that Board of Supervisors make a motion of approval for the General Plan Amendment GPAP 17-01, applied for by Richard and Whitney Brand for the following reasons. The proposed General Plan Amendment is found to be consistent with the Lake County General Plan, the Middletown Area Plan, and the Lake County Zoning Ordinance. The proposed amendment is compatible with the existing land uses in the vicinity. And as outlined in the initial study IS 17-31, prepared for this application, the proposed amendment will not result in any significant adverse environmental impacts and further direct staff to prepare, to prepare a proposed resolution. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. And Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the Planning Commission ha has reviewed and considered the environmental effects of rezone RZ-17-01 as set forth in the proposed initial study IS-17-31, which has been prepared for this project, and that the Planning Commission recommend that the Board of Supervisors approve the proposed rezoning applied for by Whit Richard and Whitney Brand on property located at 23987 and 24073 State Highway 29, Middletown, California, 95461, APNs 013-028-81 and 013-028-82 for reasons listed in the staff report dated November 4, 2020 and as amended today. I'll second. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion carried. Finally, Mr. Chair, I move that the Planning Commission <laughs> find that the tentative parcel map PM17-01 applied for by Richard and Whitney Brand on property located at 23987 State Highway 29, Middletown, California, 95461, APN, APN 013-028-81 is in conformity with the provisions of the Subdivision Map Act in Chapter 17 of the Lake County Code and the Lake County Code. And upon that basis approved said map subject to the conditions and with the findings listed in the staff report dated November 4, 2020 and as amended today. I'll second. Okay, roll call vote please. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. 
Commissioner Brown is absent. <coughs> Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, and I'd like to note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides for a seven calendar day appeal period. If there is a disagreement with the Planning Commission, an appeal to the Board of Supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the seventh calendar day following the Commission's final determination. Um, I have a suggestion. No. I know everyone in here has been very, very patient. Can we take like a quick three no. to five minute break? Uh, yes, let's take a, um, what do we want, a five minute break or ten minute, five minute break? No, five, three to five. Everybody yeah. ready? Are we all? Yes. You guys can hear us okay, John? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next item is a public hearing on the consideration of oh, major, oh. Oh. anyway, of a major use permit. UP 19-01, a mitigated neg negative declaration, IS 19-03. Applicant is Mary Draper proposing for a type three medium outdoor commercial cannabis cultivation licenses and one a type 13 self distribution license. The location is 7004 and 7232 East Highway 20, Lucerne, California. The uh, APNs are 006-005-62. 006-005-63, 006-024-12, and 006-024-13. Staff. Eric. He's mute. I think he's muted. <laughs> Are they, I thought he was covering it up. <laughs> Maybe he put a note up, like, send help. He's, Unmute me. he's, it says it's Tokara, even though it's showing Eric, maybe that's part of the problem. Well, I think they're using the same computer. We can see you, Eric, but we can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, boy. Jake, can you unmute him, please? Uh, I've sent a unmute request to him. I cannot toggle his mute for him. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, there should be a request on the screen. She says accept it, I think. If Tokara was using a different device than Eric, then he's got to unmute the device Tokara um, was using. It, it looks like as soon as his, he unmutes himself, it is remuting. Um. <laughs> Is that the same thing? Yeah. yeah. Hey. Hey. Uh, hey. There we go. Hey, you're oh. not okay, am I there? Hard up there? Yeah. Oh, good. No, I was holding up a sign saying, "How do I unmute?" <laughs> Send help. I'm being held <laughs> hostage. And, well, Takara's not back yet. So, do you want to continue without her being present, or do you want me to wait for her to return? Mr. Chair. Is her presence necessary? In my opinion, no. But. She she may feel differently. I'd like to proceed. Um, people I agree. have been very patient Go given the length it. of that prior we item. We probably have Scott listening in, so we're probably covered in that aspect. And we know we have Nicole, so. Scott, uh, I'll go ahead and proceed then if you're okay with that. <laughs> Maybe he's it's pretty straightforward that. application. Yeah, yeah. okay. Let's I'll go, go ahead. ahead. Go for it, uh, Eric. This is a major use permit and an initial study uh, regarding commercial cannabis. Surprise, surprise. Um, it affects parcels uh, 006, 024, 12, and 13, 006, 005, 62, and 63. Total land area is about 275 acres. It's located in the hill above uh, Lucerne. And uh, staff has done a site visit. The site is 4290 compliant, which is really good. Many sites are not. Um, applicant is proposing four A type three medium outdoor cultivation licenses, one A type 13 self distribution license, um, two 1500 square foot sheds to be used as drying buildings, and one uh, existing 1350 square feet agriculturally exempt barn, six foot tall security fencing that would have screening on it. Uh, 
so the cultivation areas are not visible. 12 5,000 gallon water tanks and one 10,000 gallon water tank. Estimated water usage is between one and two million gallons per harvest season. Uh, applicant has two different water sources. Uh, one is a fairly productive well on site. Uh, the details of the well are actually within the staff report. And she also has 1898 water rights uh, that allow sending water from Clear Lake onto the property that does not have a, a maximum cap limit on it. Um, We've analyzed the uh, compliance with the general plan. Uh, there's nothing in the plan that conflicts with this proposal. There are a few um, policies that actually do apply to economic development that are stated in the staff report, as well as to land use and open space. Uh, general plan mentions incompatible uses. However, the RL zone allows for ag crops. Not that cannabis is considered officially an ag crop, but it looks and acts very similar to an agricultural crop. Uh, there's also another goal within our uh, general plan that pertains to biological resources to preserve and protect environmentally sensitive, significant habitats, et cetera, et cetera. This is not in conflict with that goal. Um, we evaluated the Nice uh, Upper Lake Nice area plan for compliance. And it really doesn't speak to cannabis per se, but it does speak to economic development, agriculture, the economy. And the proposal is consistent with the area plan um, policies, et cetera. We evaluated it for zoning ordinance conformance, Article 7, rural lands, Article 27, which is for use uh, permits for commercial cannabis, and Article 50, which is for use permits in general. Uh, we found that it does comply for the reasons stated within the staff report. Environmental review. Uh, we did a fairly thorough CEQA analysis on this project. Uh, we received no adverse comments from any notified state agency or local uh, jurisdiction. Um, we did notice that there were potential impacts to aesthetics, air quality, biology, and we also put in mitigation measures for cultural uh, tribal, which we do as a matter of course for any major use permit that's cannabis related. Um, Article 51, subsection 4A covers major use permit findings for approval. There are six of them. Uh, we have to find that it's not going to be detrimental to the health, safety and welfare of the community or the uh, surrounding area. We were able to make that finding. Number two, the site is adequate in size, shape, and location for the project that's proposed. Um, proposal is for 260,000 square feet of outdoor cultivation area. That's quite a large area, but bear in mind that the properties are uh, all total 275 acres in size. So comparatively speaking, 260,000 square feet, which is uh, four acres, give or take, is only a fraction of the total property size. So we were able to make that finding. Number three, that streets, highways, and pedestrian facilities are reasonably adequate to accommodate the proposed use. Sites served by East Highway 20 with a short connector driveway leading to the house at the bottom of the hill. Uh, again, we did a 4290 and 4291 CAL FIRE compliance inspection um, approximately seven or eight months ago. And we were able to make the finding that the uh, access leading to the property is fine. It meets all the Cal Fire uh, road requirements. Number four, that there are adequate public or private services, including but not limited to fire, water, sewage disposal, and police protection to serve the project. Sites served by PG, they have an adequate primary uh, power source. I've already mentioned the water supplies that are present. Uh, houses connected to an existing septic and um, Lake County Sheriff's Department handles the law enforcement for that property. So we were able to make that finding. Number five, the project is in conformance with applicable provisions and policies of the code, general plan, and any approved zoning or land use plan. As I indicated earlier, it's uh, not in conflict with any of the adopted plans that govern uh, this type of development at that location. 
And finally, that there are no violations of chapters 5, 17, 21, 23, or 26 of the Lake County Code. There are none. I checked with um, code enforcement. There are no outstanding violations on that property. And finally, use permit findings for approval is found in Article 27, and there are three of them. Uh, the proposed use complies with all development standards as described in Section 1.I. Um, response, uh, the applicant is fully compliant with the development standards. Number two, applicant is qualified to make the application. The applicant and her employees have passed the live scan background check and are qualified to undertake commercial cannabis cultivation activity provided this use permit is approved. And finally, number three, the application complies with the qualifications for a permit described in section 1.2 sub I. Uh, response, the application complies with all qualifications for a permit. Um, it reiterates the total square footage of the cultivation area, as well as the request for a self-distribution license. So in other words, all three of those uh, Article 27 findings for approval are met. Our recommendation to adopt mitigation declaration IS 1903 for use permit 1901 with the findings listed on page 13 of the staff report and to approve use permit UP 1901 uh, with the findings listed on pages 13 and 14 of the staff report. And uh, that concludes my presentation unless you have any questions. Oh, uh, one thing I do want to mention, um, Article 27 discourages removal of trees. The applicant's requesting the removal of uh, either 15 or 18 oak trees that are over five inches in diameter measured at four and a half feet above grade. Uh, I've required a, a tree removal plan and one of the conditions of approval requires a five to one replacement ratio uh, for each healthy oak tree that meets that size standard that is removed. So basically she's gonna have to replace, I don't remember if it's 15 or 18 trees. I think it's 18. It's 18. Uh, at, a, at a five to one ratio. And that's within the conditions of approval. So they've addressed the uh, tree removal, which the way it's worded in the code, it doesn't say they can't do it. It says it's discouraged and in the past, when I've had these types of applications, I've required replacement planting, and that seems to satisfy the uh, intent, if not the letter of the code that discourages tree removal. So with that, uh, that concludes my presentation. I just have a uh, well, quick question, Mark, on... Uh, That's Eric. Eric, I'm sorry. Mark, That's is right. it clear like oh, now? Um, <laughs> Eric. Um, yes. Is that your uh, replacement uh, with the removal of the trees? Is that consistent with other types of uh, operations? I mean, you. It, it is. I've had non cannabis uh, development proposals that we required a five to one replacement ratio. I have seen a three to one replacement ratio, but our code's kind of vague as far as the ratio of uh, new trees versus trees being removed. I thought five to one was a safe uh, number to use because we have precedent for it. Is that, uh, well, my main question was to other, you know, like uh, a vineyard or, or, you know, some other type of agricultural operation. Is that kind of consistent to what, what you guys do? I'd like to just make sure that at all. it's all. No, not at all, because vineyards aren't regulated in the same way that uh, commercial developments are regulated. Uh, vineyards typically require a grading permit, but not necessarily anything more than that. Uh, commercial cannabis, we at staff level treat it similarly to a shopping center in terms of how we evaluate it. Granted, it's quite a bit different from, uh, you know, traditional commercial development, but uh, if they're removing trees, uh, we would make them provide replacement trees. Right. Okay. Mr. Chair, my only question is about the trees too. And um, Eric, so was, when an annual inspection is, is performed, um, in addition to looking at the cannabis being grown, would you be checking to see that the trees had in fact been replanted? Yeah, the, the planting of the trees technically needs to happen before this use permit becomes valid. In the case of Draper, uh, she's actually received early activation 
And so um, there are some plants in the ground now. And so the trees would need to be planted technically immediately. Uh, although realistically, if they were to plant them now at the start of winter, they may not survive. So it, it may make sense for them to plant in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to do our site inspection for one year following approval of this use permit if it gets approved. No, I just wanted to be sure that um, the follow-up was there for the trees as well as for how the cannabis is being treated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to do our annual inspection. We go through each individual condition to make sure they're meeting it. So not only do they have to put the trees in, but they have to irrigate them and maintain them in a healthy state. And that's included in the condition. Excellent. Okay. Um, I had a question. Yeah. Um, about that uh, 1898 water rights uh, to water from Clear Lake, um, what used to be there that, that that property has those water rights? You know, I just don't have the background on the origin of the water rights. I can only guess that there was some irrigated uh, crop of some sort being grown there, but Again, that could have been in the 1920s. I just don't know. I think in the 1990s, they were probably more liberal with taking water from Clear Lake than we would be now. Well, it could we, be, could have been for just for uh, watering cattle as well, too. Well, it could I mean, be. Yeah, it could have been yeah. used for grazing land or who knows yeah. what. But it's most um, likely ag. Well, they're, they're not proposing uh, Clear Lake water as their primary water source. That would come from the well. Uh, although it may well affect the aquifer to some degree. Um, they're, they're using quite a bit of water, but the well is pretty stout. And so the recharge rate of the well is high. Uh, it, it recharges quite well. And that could be and the distance of Clear Lake from this site, right. which isn't too terribly far away. Yeah, and the water usage will be recorded uh, if a certain amount of gallons are um, used from the well as well as certain amount of uh, gallons are used from Clear Lake, right? That, that's going to be documented or, or all that water just goes into one count? Uh, well, the well, certainly, yeah. They have meters that they have to provide on the well that uh, show gallonage usage per month, per day, per year, et cetera. And that's part of the annual report they have to provide. I'm not quite as clear on if they draw from Clear Lake uh, due to the 1890 water rights how that's metered. So I'm a little vague on that part of it, but Clear Lake, from what I can tell in the submitted material, is a backup emergency water source that they have legal rights to. I just don't know how they would meter it. It's probably possible, I just don't know how they would do it. Well, I think as far as uh, on those particular water rates, you'd have to look at, you know, if this was even traditional agriculture, if it's not, not being not being recorded if there's no requirements for recording it uh but then i guess if you're talking about a commercial operation you know i don't know if that falls under a different category um well, i've, re I've read the terms of the water rights it's really hard to read because of the age and the quality of the uh, print but i was able to read them um it doesn't specify what that clear lake water is to be used for oh really just, they have the water rights okay uh, it also doesn't put a maximum cap on them, which is kind of disconcerting, but that's probably how they did it back in the 1890s. When, do you know when the dam was installed? I don't. That was, I think that was after 1900. No, I don't, I don't have any idea. Because I, I feel before the, before the dam was installed, the dam is what gave YOLO flood control. Um, jurisdiction over at least a portion of the water within Clear Lake. And uh -huh. so before that, if, you know, before that it was the county or the state or whoever it was. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions or concerns? Even more concerns about that? No questions. Okay. Um, and do we have the applicant? Is uh, Ms. Draper or a representative? attending on, not in, uh, on Zoom. Um, so that was Mary Draper right there. Uh, looks like we're getting some feedback from your, from your system. 
um, if you would turn down your uh, audio so we could try again or I see you also on another device here yeah you can be on two devices at one time for a microphone I'm gonna try to unmute. I'm only on one device can you hear me can you unmute me we hear uh, you yeah, can hear you can you hear okay. me now okay great uh, good morning commissioners or actually afternoon I guess now Mm -hmm. um, I would like to address the water issue first that you spoke of. The uh, water rights from 1868, um, it goes through the state water board and they have actually control over that. And they would require a meter in order to report and monitor the monthly usage of it. Um, it hasn't been totally okayed by the water board, state water board yet because I have to prove to them that water's been used for uh, the past five years um, all the time. So I would have to prove to them through the PG&E bill that it has been used all the time. Our primary source of water is through our well. And according to the staff report, our, we'll use between 1,000 and 2,000 gallons per harvest which we have one harvest a year, and our well produces 12,960 gallons of water over a six month period. So we have way more than enough water in our well in order to um, feed our irrigation. So I don't anticipate ever having to use the water rights. And of course, I would not use them until the state gave me permission and when the state does allow it, if they allow it, it will have to be metered and it will have to have a report to the state on a monthly basis as to the usage of it. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions. If you do, um, I would be more than happy to try to answer them or clarify, clear it up. And so far I have had not had any negative comments from the community. And if there happens to be someone with a concern today, I would really appreciate the opportunity to be able to respond. And with that, thank you very much. A uh, quick clarification, uh, you said 1,000 and 2,000, but on the um, report that we have here, it says 1 million and 2 million gallons I'm, for harvest? Yes, I'm sorry. It is 1 million, 2 million, and okay. then 12,960,000. Right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, too many zeros for me. Public <laughs> comment? <laughs> yeah, um, I have some thoughts about the water, the water rights that I would probably get in trouble for saying, so I should probably not state those. Well, then I will say, if you have water rights that old, those are your water rights. Um, did I? At least that's my feelings. Um, is there anybody else who has any comment on this? So does anybody in the room here wish to speak on it? Do we have anyone else from Zoom, Jake, who's expressing an interest? Uh, not that has been indicated to me, but I have sent a unmute request out to the Zoom floor if anyone would like to make a comment. Uh, we did have, um, I'm sorry, um, I believe Mustafa. Oh, that's Oluwaka, right. Uh, from he, earlier today. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Hello? Oh, okay, perfect. So the uh I'm gonna start with the, the gentleman name. right when he's talking about the water. Mustafa, if you could oh, just state your first and last name for us for the record. Sure. Mustafa Oidat. First name Mustafa, last name Oida. Okay. Okay, so can I start? With addressing the first thing, the public he hearing the lady, of course, uh, with all love and respect, of course, she said she never heard anything from the community. She never approached us to hear from us. I just got the notice yesterday, and I think it was done in a very deceiving way that we missed this meeting. So that's why I insisted to talk today. And I believe there's a legal time 
to inform the public before this hearing. But that's okay. I will continue that because we bought the property and there's a water issue right now. The gentleman in the car, I don't, I'm sorry for not mentioning your name, he seems to be aware of the issues and the problem with water. Before the dam, there was water running through the property, but since they put the dam, that is gone. There has been huge changes. The county gave a permit to a gentleman growing already in the top of the hill, and he is causing us a hell of a time with the water. We are running out of water literally. There is three houses just around the corner. They cannot get water like with the quality that they can use. We are fortunate. We test the water every three months, but still we're walking in eggshell. For her to come using that kind of massive amount of water, it is going to affect our water, period. I don't know. There is nothing right now anyone said to prove or to support anything that is not going to affect our water. It seems like, I'm not a scientist, but the, the water is coming down the mountain behind us, our property and hers, and coming down somewhere to the well. The other thing, the, uh, everybody tries to be nice, nice and show that everything is positive, but it's not. Like, for instance, use, the usage of the water. The gentleman who was granted an, uh, the application to grow on the top of the hill, he used to be uh, working with the sheriff's department or something. He won't even talk to the neighbors. Nobody's supervising what he's doing. We don't know how much water he's using. And there's no one to go there to check. That's the other thing. The gentleman said that no one is going to get involved for a year. You will give her the permit, then you go to a year from now. That can kill every every property there and make us dry out of water or at least the good water we're using. I uh, put few points here. I'll say it very quick. So the chemical she's gonna use in growing, it's gonna end in the in the in the water, regardless of what she say or any study. Because of the fire, everybody's talking about Napa County is in trouble now because all the chemicals be used to put out the fire is gonna end in the ground, soil and water. That's a no-brainer. So when she starts growing, she's going to be using chemicals. Right now, we are kind of excluded, very isolated community and very small with a very limited source of water. All this will be in jeopardy. So I don't know if she has insurance to guarantee if we run out of water, she will compensate us for the property value because the property will be value zero. There is another issue with the uh, safety and security. If we already have that gentleman in the back uh, that growing weed in his property. We are vulnerable because it attracts criminals and thieves. And we don't see any plans for safety and security, cameras. So she has going to have a guard on the property. Of course, the sheriff take care of it, but it takes them 10 to 15 minutes if to you show could, up at the property. If we you could just one of wrap it up. We, we do, 10 minutes. We do um, allow three minutes. So if you could um, which you've gone over that time. If you can okay, just wrap I'll, it up I'll real quick, up. please. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so the water, everybody lies about the water. So how much we have already, how much is she going to use, and how are we going to measure it? And what if she, like, would she take inspection out of nowhere, like un unscheduled inspection? Uh, there's another thing is, like, having, having the... Uh, Having this to be tested with uh, with somebody hired by the county, not hired by her or the owner, because it seems like every word that's being said right now is lying and biased. Especially the gentleman was was presenting the project. This is not something good for the community or for the environment or for anything, and it's going to kill a small community by sucking their water. Period. It's okay. going to kill us. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank thank you very much. Um, do we have some other uh, public comment? I see we're getting some people joining in. Oh, uh, Lance, did you wish to speak? Uh, Jake, do we have someone else? Uh, yeah, let me, I will send another a meet request out. We did have those uh, two new participants join. Um, if you'd like to make a comment, please unmute and state your first comment. Okay. Uh, right. Hi, I'm, this is Aaron McCarrick. I had a quick comment if I'm recorded right now. You're on. Hi, Aaron. Okay. 
Uh, it's just a quick comment. Um, there was a similar um, concern with another cannabis applicant down on Butts Canyon um, about you know some of the leach leaching of um, nutrients and. In general, cannabis is tested to just such a high, high degree um, that it can't really pass anything. Anything in a grocery store um, isn't tested to the amount that cannabis is tested to. So just to try to mitigate any of those concerns of um, neighbors worrying about any sort of additive or nutrient leaching into the ground, um, I believe the applicant probably wouldn't put anything in there that would be adverse to the natural surroundings because it wouldn't pass the testing. It wouldn't be able to be in the commercial marketplace. That's it. That's my comment. Aaron McCarrick from Clear Lake. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. <clears throat> Do we have anyone else on there? Okay. We have Lance here in the chambers. Lance Williams, Lake County resident. Um, I guess I'd like to speak to, I believe his name was Mustaf. Um, I think that they, the county does give out proper notice. Um, the gentleman, uh, Eric Porter, who was presenting this, uh, I believe checks every project and treats them all equally. So I think some of the statements that were made um, were incorrect or maybe misinformed. That uh, there is a certain things that have to be done here uh, at the, uh, in the third floor in the CDD in the planning department. So what has been stated by Eric Porter is that this, this project meets all the, all the parameters here. And I think that's something very important to look at. I also agree with Aaron saying that, again, nutrients, pesticides are not one of the big concerns here in the cannabis community, uh, the way we have to grow. So I, I can only address that. Um, water concerns are always here. I think that uh, learning about this project, knowing that there is uh, some very rare water rights there um, is, I mean, I, there's probably only three or four in the county that have those kind of water rights. Mm -hmm. So I think there's things that can be mitigated and addressed here. And uh, I just would like to say that I, I really believe that uh, places should have been notified, and I believe they were. And I believe I trust Eric Porter's, uh, you know, putting together this uh, project because all projects have to be looked at the same because there is, and I see someone shaking their finger at me, um, you know, they have to be looked at a certain way um, because then it would put the county at liability. And I don't think the county would do that. And I can, I see, and I've seen a lot of projects being put together and I don't see anything where there's any variances here that are something that uh, we should be frightened of. So I myself would love to see this project uh, completed and put forth. Uh, I know there's tax money that has been paid that does bring in a great deal of tax money. Um, and I think that uh, it's close to a quarter million dollar in tax money. So if things can be mitigated, I think that uh, Mary, Mary Draper has been a very good actor here. And I think that this should go forward. And uh, I'm sorry that uh, someone in the community thinks that there is uh, they, there's something that's going on. I just, I don't perceive that myself. Again, Lance Williams, Lake County resident. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. <clears throat> Do we I have, have a uh, hand raised in Zoom from a Jennifer Smith and I also have uh, Mustafa. Looks like he wants to make an additional comment. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna strict, stick more strictly to our three minute uh, time period. So, oh, was it Jennifer? You said Jake. Uh, yes. Yeah. So Jennifer, uh, please state your first and last name, and you have three minutes. Uh, Jennifer, you are unmuted. I'm not hearing anything from you. You might have a, a mute on your microphone if you're trying to speak. Oh, actually, wait, hold on. I think I see her on a phone as well. Hi, John. 
You were front and center for a second. Oh. Um, Jake, are we going to be able to get this figured out, or should we move uh, on? Yeah, I'm sending a, a mute request to her, and I'm not seeing uh, any response. Is there somebody else that's teed up that we could go to while we're trying to figure that other one out? Maybe. I also see there's two comments down in the chat. I don't know if anybody's uh, keeping an eye out for those or, or those from uh, Jake, yeah, maybe. Good chance that's me, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, let's go ahead. It looks like Mustafa wishes to speak again. Uh, we'll go ahead and give you three minutes. And uh, I may cut you off at three minutes. Perfect. So the first thing about the testing, after the permit is given, from our experience for the gentleman in the same area, nobody follows up in anything. Nobody go and does testing. Nobody go and check how much water has been used or what, uh, how they are dealing. The guy, actually, there is a war between my neighbors for the water rights. That's the first thing. The second thing, the response about chemicals is vague, meaning too much, too little. It needs to be numbers, scientific, lab. I get lab test my water every three months. Are we gonna have some kind of a lab testing everything to make sure how much going into the soil? And the other problem, if something happens, if she violates any of these, is the permit will be stopped, uh, the declined, or it's gonna be suspended. Because the other problem we have right now with the gentleman at the top of the hill, we, there's no follow-up, there's nothing. There were the people complain and there's no one to respond to it. And that's what I'm saying. The gentleman says we treat things different. The problem is there's no treatment. After you give the permit, they are free. Only God can stop them. If you go and complain anywhere, nobody gets involved. No, not even the police or the code enforcement. We are out there hanging in the air. The problem is our property is in the, in, in, in the other side because we can lose the value of our property and everything if that water gets polluted by it or she uses too much water, which you will never be able to contain or maintain or measure or have any control over it, period. If you have a way to do it, please enlighten me. Thank you. Can I actually, I hate to do this, but well, not necessarily hate to, but I should. Um, can I ask where your property is located? Are you uh, it's, in a resident? Like uh, uh, yeah, I was looking at the map. It's, it's that the whole area is like a, a, like a half circle, I believe, and the hill behind us. And then we have the well and the water. I believe I was told that this entire, within like a few miles across the freeway, we might be all sharing the same source of water. Yeah. See, that's the thing. It's, it's, a, it's a huge area, and the same source of water is coming from, if I'm assuming, from high from the mountain, coming down. But it's down there somewhere. We all share it. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because we used to have the water running, coming out of the mountain. That's what I was told, without even digging. This is how Are much you, water we had before. And you, it's, so it's you, live on, the, you live on yeah, Highway well, 20, correct? I'm sorry? Your property is on Highway 20? Yeah, East Highway 20. Okay. Um, okay. By the way, I'm not, I'm not against development. Just the problem, we never heard Three of minutes, this. It, just kind of, it came to, yeah. Our, yeah. to us yesterday. Yeah, we, have... we need somebody to talk to us. If there's nothing wrong with it, I am for it. I don't have a problem, okay. but I want to make okay. sure that... Our kids right. are safe, we're at, our water we're at your safe, three minutes, sir. and we're not going to get any chemicals in the water. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes, John. Um, you and I are the, the longest-serving <laughs> commissioners at this point, and we have processed many, many similar applications. And there is nothing that I have seen in this staff report that suggests that Mary Graper is being treated any differently than any other similar applicant. The same conditions apply to her for water monitoring, for security, for road maintenance, and uh, employee background checks. Right. All is the same. There will be an annual inspection, and uh, I understand Mr. Awaidot's concerns, but I just don't see that reflected in this project or the staff report. Right. Um. <clears throat> Uh, well, we did have somebody else who was trying to speak, we thought. Jake, did you have any luck? 
Uh, yes, I think we resolved the issue. I'm okay. checking with Amber Smith. Hopefully. Uh, Jennifer, you said you were on the phone. Oh, I see you unmuted now. I, oh. I am. Hello. Yes, hi. Will you please confirm your first and last name? Yeah, start over. Jennifer Smith. Okay, Jennifer, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to echo some of the things that have been said. This is a pretty standard um, procedure. We are, as cannabis farmers, we do have to have well monitoring. And since the primary source of the water is coming from her wells, that would be monitored and reported annually to the county during inspection. And those documents are open for neighbors to review, I'm sure, at some point. Um, I, I feel like the, any complaints seem to be hearsay. And I would like to see more factual data on neighbors running out of water. If that isn't true, if that is in fact true, um, the state water rights are very difficult to utilize. And I'm sure that as a backup plan, um, that is only a backup plan. It's not any farmer's preferential choice right now. Um, Mary Draper has shown herself to be a um, advocate and a good um, operator in this county. There's no reason to think that this would not be a well-run and operated farm again. And the last thing I wanted to say, I don't remember, but um, everything seems pretty straightforward and I'd like to see this approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, do we have anybody else, uh, Jake, that you could see? Uh, no, that has been, that's the last, I don't think um, we sent a unmute request out to the floor for this one yet. Um, but that has been all of the... Um, what better do, just, just to be sure. Okay. Please. Well, all right, I sent a unmute request out to the floor. If you would like to make a comment, please state your first and last name. Okay, I don't think we have anyone else wishing to speak. I'll go ahead and close public comment. Bring it back Mr. Sunrun, this is Scott DeLeon. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Um, the final condition uh, of the permit uh, allows the county to revoke this permit if the use um, is, uh, is concluded to be detrimental. Uh, and, and basically, if they don't follow the rules and the conditions, uh, the county does have the authority to revoke it. Uh, right. You have mentioned a couple of times uh, the annual inspections that we do, and uh, our staff uh, is um, uh, continues to do that, and we will do that uh, with this particular uh, and, and ev every permitted uh, cannabis operation. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll do a report to uh, to your commission, and uh, so annually we will be uh, evaluating uh, this site and 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 all the others that are permitted uh, for compliance with the conditions. Right. Okay. Um, I know I have certainly read through this with my fine tooth comb and it all looks up to par with all the other projects that we've seen before us, uh, including a previous, a previous um, application by Ms. Draper, which I don't think we have had any issues with since approving. Um, do any other commissioners have any any issues they wish to bring up or any uh, any concerns? Anything for discussion? I don't. No, Mr. Chair. Sure. Okay. Eduardo? No. It's actually Brown's district, but he's not here. I'm prepared to make a motion. <laughs> I move that the planning Commission find that the initial study IS 19-03 applied for by Mary Draper on property located at 7004 and 7232 East 
Highway 20, Lucerne, and further described as APN 006-024-12 and 006-024-2. Dash one three zero. Those are all separate, correct? Zero zero six dash zero zero five dash six two and zero zero six dash zero zero five dash six three will not have a significant effect on the environment and therefore mitigated mitigated negative declaration shall be approved with the findings listed in the staff report dated September twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Second. Second. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh -huh. Nice. We got a vote. Yeah. Oh, Commissioner Heck? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yes. Motion carries. I move that the Planning Commission find that the use permit UP19-06 applied for by Mary Draper on property located at 7004 and 7232 East Highway 20 Lucerne and further described as APN. 006-024-12 and 13. Um, APN 006-005-62 and 63 does meet the requirements of section 51.4 in the Lake County Zoning Ordinance and the major use permit be granted subject to the conditions and, the, and with the findings listed in the staff report dated September 24th, 2020. I'll Dave. second. Oh, I was going <laughs> to say the motion might have been dead. Um, okay, uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. Commissioner Sinrum? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, aye. I'd like to note that the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides for a seven calendar day appeal period if there's a disagreement with the planning commission an appeal to the board of supervisors may be filed the appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m on or before the seventh calendar day following the commission's determination okay motion done let's see Two. Uh, so this is four, right? Yeah, four and five. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing on consideration of a major use permit, UP19-34, and categorical exemption, CE20-73. The applicant is Jerusalem Gold, LLC, proposing continuing and expanding an existing permitted cannabis cultivation operation. The location is 25432 Jerusalem Grade Road, Lower Lake, California, APN 013-017-25, 013-017-26, 013-017-27, 013-017-28. Any applicant is present. Do you wish to come up here or are you... Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll ask. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and hear from staff. And then, uh, as I mentioned, the applicant is here. So if the, any of the commissioners have any questions, we can bring her up to answer questions. Hey, Commissioner, uh, planning commissioners again. <laughs> uh, so to, for today's agenda, we're going over the same thing. Uh, project description, site description, project analysis, recommendation and conditions. Um, for project description, uh, the applicant is requesting a major use permit for a license uh, type A type 3 for one acre cannabis cultivation. The applicant, however, have an existing cannabis cultivation operation on site. Uh, in this slide uh, shows an existing and proposed use of the pro uh, project area. It includes the expansion of the cannabis operation from 12,304 square feet to 42,080 square feet with 29,776 square feet in the change in cultivation size. The existing growing method for cultiva uh, cultivation and the proposed uh, methods to expand using above ground uh, pots 
The applicant will do some vegetation of vegetative clearing in order to place the pots as well as fire breaks around the cultivation area. The applicant is also applying for a self-transport dis distributor license, parking area, and an 80 square feet uh, shed. The site description, the project site is located in an isolated uh, back end of Jerusalem grade. The parcel is approximately 40.49 40 acres and is zoned rural land and waterway district combining. In the map, the applicant is surrounded by open space and other rural land. The neighboring parcel also applied for a uh, commercial cannabis cultivation. The site and other uh, properties along Jerusalem grade are known to have commercial, uh, commercial cannabis cultivation permit in process or have been approved by the planning commission. Project analysis, staff reviewed the project uh, for concurrence with Lake County general plan, Middletown area plan, zoning ordinance. Staff determined that this project is consistent with the above. The project site was an existing permitted cannabis uh, cultivation operation under the previous local ordinance. Uh, the continuance of the operation would encourage uh, economic growth for the county as well as strengthening the cannabis community while preventing new incompatible land uses. The location of the uh, project site is currently within a community with similar uses. Per the zoning ordinance, it is required that all applicants uh, install a water meter to monitor water usage and provide an estimated water calculation for their particular grow. In addition, it is required that the applicant's uh, project site is located in areas that would protect sensitive habitat, typically determined by a qualified biologist and all waterways by 100 feet. A biolo <laughs> biolog <laughs> biological survey was conducted on June 26, 2017, and again on January 24, 2020, and found no evidence of sensitive or unique biological resources within the project area. An archaeological uh, study was conducted on the project site and found no evidence of cultural resources. The Chris report uh, came uh, resulted in 100% of the property being surveyed and identified no cultural resources. A request for review what local tribe was sent on June 12, 2020 and have no uh, comments received. Uh, however, a site visit was requested December 8th and conducted December 9th, uh, 2020. So it's recent uh, with a Middletown re representative. No negative comments regarding the project due to no ground disturbance uh, proposed. A condition is made in an event. A cultural resource is found on um, attachment <coughs> six. The project site is an existing uh, cannabis operation and the need for a use permit would allow the continued use of the operation with an expansion of approximately one acre in size. The cultivation of cannabis within the soil designation is permitted for outdoor and indoor cannabis cultivation, which is consistent with the project proposal. The cultivation of commercial cannabis is permitted within rural land zoning district upon issuance of a use permit uh, pursuant to section 27.11 table B of the Lake County Zoning Ordinance. A type three license allows up to 43,560 square feet of canopy per license and requires a 20 acre. However, the project is proposing one license type previously mentioned with a total of 42,000 square feet of outdoor canopy area within a total of 42,080 square feet of cultivation area. In addition to the section of Lake County Zoning Ordinance and Article 37, the applicant uh, project site is located over 400 feet from the nearest waterway. The applicant will incorporate best management practice in protecting natural resources within the waterway combining district, as well as compliance with the Lake County Zoning Ordinance for this project. 
the preceding photos uh, was taken during an initial site visit and 4290 inspection and deem it as exempt from 4290 stand due to absent of a structure uh, proposed for the, in this project. This is an existing uh, cultivation area with a uh, water tank in the background. So in this photo, there is no ground disturbance, but there are uh, some vegetative clearing. And this is an existing uh, well um, meter monitor. The project proposal consists of an existing cannabis cultivation operation under the old ordinance uh, article 72 and meets the requirements set forth in the current zoning ordinance uh, article 27. The project proposal includes using existing holes for planting in ground and new expansion of cannabis plant located in above ground planter pot of a previously disturbed by vegetative uh, clearing or wildfire management practice. Some minor grading is required for preparation of the site and planting and it would allow earth movement of a maximum of 50 cubic yards without a permit. If the applicant proposes grading or any uh, um, earth movement of 50 cubic yards to 500 cubic yards, a simple grading permit is needed. However, the applicant does not propose such grading of that amount of volume um, within the applicant's project scope. An archaeological survey was conducted by Errington and Stapleton in 2017, 100% of the project site and found no cultural resources. Biological resource assessment uh, was conducted by Maso and Graining, 2017 and 2020. No critical habitat for any federal listed species occur within the project area. No test terrestrial uh, special status habitat were detected uh, within a study area within the pro uh, property boundary. During field survey, no st uh, special status species were detected within the project site. However, special status uh, species were observed within the study area, but not near the project area to impose uh, potential direct or indirect impact on biological resource. In some, there are no potential uh, impacts to biological resources within the project site and some biological resource can be found within the prox uh, proximity of the parcel boundary. However, no adverse uh, impact is expected to occur during the operation of the proposed cultivation area. The study area includes uh, several water resources, three uh, seasonal bounds, commit bonds, um, a water resource and, wait, I'm sorry, a freshwater marsh and five class uh, three water course the applicant um, project site is initially chosen to avoid water resource and was set back to comply with the Lake County Zoning Ordinance, Article 27 and 37. To further alleviate any potential impacts, the applicant create, created a buffer of at least 120 feet from all water resource. The cultivation site is located over 400 feet uh, from the nearest waterway. The project does not involve removal of healthy, mature scenic trees, all required setback and requirement are implemented to comply with the zoning ordinance, general plan and area plan. The applicant will incorporate best management practices in protecting natural resources within the waterway combining district as well as with the lake ordinance. And this project in order to avoid and protect water resources, uh, compliance with the zoning ordinance, general plan and area plan coupled with uh, best management plan would ensure, ensure that the project would not predict to have any adverse effect on the environment. To approve uh, the project, six findings must be met for the major use permit and three findings uh, must be met in Article 27 AT in the staff report. Uh, neighbors within uh, 725 were notified um, of this proposal. The staff recommends the adoption of the categorical exemption due to the uh, following findings and uh, approval of major use permit UP 1934 with several conditions outlined in the in full in attachment six conditions of approval. Okay, and that is the end of my 
decision. Thank you, Sir Tour. Not too fast. <clears throat> Commissioner Sundrum, this is Scott DeLeon. I had been contacted earlier by uh, Sally Peterson with the uh, Middletown uh, Rancheria asking, uh, she apparently submitted some e-comments and I just wanted to confirm uh, that you had re received, uh, you and the commissioners had received uh, anything from them via e the e-comment. I've seen nothing. I see. <clears throat> I did see on Granicus there's a little kind of message box thing, but <clears throat> okay. Scott, do you have a copy before in front of you, or I, I don't, unfortunately, and um, uh, she's dropped out of the meeting. I've I've reached out yeah. to her via email and uh, have not uh, well, received yeah. anything back from her. Uh, yeah. uh, there, Takara is sharing her screen, so perhaps we oh, have yeah. something there. Thank you, Takara. You're very welcome. <laughs> Granicus is supposed to push out an email to us, but apparently it looks like it's I not working. I can't understand what you're saying. Sorry, Sorry. let me back up, maintain social distance. Sorry about that. Um, Granicus um, has the e-comment function. Uh -huh. And what I'm sharing right now is what is shown when you enter a comment. And since Ms. Peterson is no longer on the line, I'll go ahead and read it into the record for her. But e comment is a part of the record and we'll make sure um, to figure out the logistics going forward. Okay. Um, Sally Peterson, December 10th, 2020 at 9.42 a.m. Good morning, Middletown Rancheria. The tribe has met with the applicant and has conducted a cultural resources training. The applicant agreed to contact the tribe should any discovery of cultural resources occur. We thank the applicant and the planning commission for your time and consideration. Respectfully, Sally Peterson, Tribal Council very Vice Chairwoman and Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. And she did mark the support function for this um, uh, agenda item. Okay, thank you, Takara. You're very welcome. Yeah, I did see on, I did have public comment on here on Granicus from uh, one of the previous <clears throat> items, but I don't see any showing up here for this one. Okay, does anybody, any of the commissioners have any issues or any questions, comments before we go to public comment? Again, we do have the applicant here if you have any specific questions you'd like to ask. No questions, Mr. Chair. Okay. We'll go ahead and open it up to uh, public comment. Anybody in the room wish to speak? No? Okay. Do we have uh, anybody online who wishes to speak, Jake? Uh, I have sent a unmute request out to the Zoom floor. If you would like to make a comment, please unmute and state your first and last name. And aside from that, I have not been uh, provided any interest to speak. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't see that we're seeing anything. Look here. Um, we not have. We don't have any more. Are you turning it up or down? I'm fixing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody turned it off. So it's been freezing. I just I forgot my glasses in the truck. Uh oh. Um, okay. So not seeing any more public comment. I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Um, and back to the board. I, Mr. Chair, if, if there are no other um, questions or comments from my colleagues, I'm prepared to offer. Well, motion or two. I just I did not see very much uh, mentioned on water usage projections that are made in uh, other property management plans. Um, I don't know if anybody is in, in, has any concerns about that. If not, we can go ahead and proceed. Do you want to speak about it? Um. 
it, do you, does it, it, well, if no one else is interested, then I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I, I'm not that I'm not interested. It's just, it's more like she has something else already going and just adding to it and, um, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Chair. Thank you for offering that. I move that the Planning Commission find that the notice of exemption prepared for major use permit UP 19-45 applied for by Bridget King on a property located at 25432 Jerusalem Grade, Lower Lake, California, further described as APN 013-017-25, 013-017-25, Dash 017 dash 28 is exempt from CEQA because, CEQA because it falls within the categorical exemption class 4 15304 based on the findings set forth in the staff report dated November 3, 2020. I second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Four, four, four. Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. And Commissioner Sinram? Yes. Motion so carried. Mr. Chair, I move that the Planning Commission find that the major use permit UP 19-45 prepared for the, pro for the project proposed by Bridget King on a property located at 25432 Jerusalem Grade, Lower Lake, California, further described as APN 013-017-25, 013-017-26, does meet the requirements of section 51.4 of the Lake County Zoning Ordinance and the major use permit be granted subject to the conditions and with the findings listed in the staff report dated November 3, 2020. I second. All right, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Let me get a roll call vote, please. Sure, Commissioner Hess. Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. And Commissioner Sinram? Yes. Thank you. Motion so carried. Okay. I'd like to note the applicant already. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any interested person uh, is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides for a seven calendar day appeal period. If there is a disagreement with the Planning Commission, an appeal to the Board of Supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the seventh calendar day following the commission, the commission's final determination. Okay, one more. Uh, it's, a public, a it's a public hearing on Consideration of a major use permit and let's see major use permit UP 19-10 and a mitigated negative, dec negative declaration IS 19-21. The applicant is Morgan Valley Ventures LLC proposing 6A Type 3 medium outdoor commercial cannabis cultivation licenses and 1A Type 13 self-distribution license and 1 5,000 square foot drying building. The location is 22800 and 22520 Morgan Valley Road, Lower Lake, California, uh, APNs 012-010-82012-069-59 and 012-069-60. And are you the applicant? Representative. Okay, we do have a representative of the applicant here, so. Um, staff. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Eric Porter, again, Associate Planner. Uh, Morgan Valley Ventures was actually approved for a uh, primary uh, use permit for 91,000 square feet of commercial cannabis in 2018. Uh, however, they have 279 acres, so they're able to actually apply for quite a bit more than what they had been approved for. So this is a follow-up application. Total square footage of the canopy area is going to be 530,736 square feet. Uh, okay, we do have a representative of the applicant here, so. Okay, um, 
All right, I'm not gonna get that far down into the details of it. Suffice to say that they've applied for a second use permit. Um, we do have a water availability analysis uh, in the staff report on page three. They've actually got a, a two different water sources. They've got on-site wells, plus they have an above ground reservoir that's capable of uh, containing 2,280,000 square feet of water or about seven acre feet. Uh, projected usage is quite a bit less than that. Um, well, it's not quite a bit less. Uh, projected usage is about 6,600,000 gallons. So they are able to, um, between the on-site storage and between the well, they're able to meet that demand. There were no known water shortages in that area. And so we didn't find water to be problematic. Getting Eric. back to the actual uh, Eric. application. Um, Eric. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, does that um, rely on average annual rainfall or is there, or well, maybe I'll ask the, the representative if they fill that with the wells or how that works. It, it, I think mind. it's a combination of both, but I would defer that question to the applicant. Yeah, well, sorry, go ahead. The project is a phased project. On page three, it lists the uh, phasing. Phase one is actually already done. That was the uh, 2018 cannabis application. Phase two would add an additional 100,000 square feet of outdoor cultivation area uh, beginning May 1st of next year. Phase three would add an additional 217,800 square feet of outdoor cultivation beginning May 1st in 2022. Um, we will coordinate with the tax assessor to make sure that they're being fairly taxed based on that phasing plan. Uh, it's a very rural area, sparsely populated. It, in my opinion, is fairly appropriate for this type of activity. The zoning is conducive to uh, outdoor commercial cannabis. There's no high value farmland. Um, there's really nothing on site that is overly problematic. Uh, given the size of the site, they do have several class two and class three streams. However, they have engineered uh, plans that show adequate separation between the top of the bank and the nearest cultivation area. So as with any cannabis cultivation, it has to be compared up with the general plan policies, uh, area plan and the zoning ordinance, the applicable chapters within the zoning ordinance. So regarding general plan, it is rural lands, but it's also agriculture uh, as far as the categorization. There's nothing in the general plan that conflicts with this proposal. Um, there's several policies that are on page six of the staff report that apply um, from the general plan. But again, the general plan was never intended for commercial cannabis evaluation. So it's kind of a reach on some of these. However, it's uh, the most appropriate fit that I could find within the general plan. Regarding the lower lake area plan, uh, there are several, actually there's just one policy economic development that fits this proposal. Uh, I've indicated that they will employ up to five additional employees who would be local to Lake County, which will have far reaching effects if you take into consideration the retail aspect of commercial cannabis. Uh, so not only would the cultivators be employed, but they would also uh, send their product to the local retailers who would also further benefit economically, which would in turn help the economy within Lake County. Uh, zoning ordinance conformance. This is zoned RLAWW, uh, which is rural lands, agricultural and waterway. Um, regarding agriculture, there's uh, the purpose statement is found. It primarily relates to crop production. Uh, debatably, cannabis is a crop. Article seven, rural lands, it talks about the um, purpose on page seven of rural lands. Likewise, article 37, waterway, um, that primarily indicates that there is some kind of a waterway on a property. And in this case, there are several because of the size of the property. And finally, article 27 use permits has the regular standards that we have to evaluate it for. Um, everything on this property complies. Uh, this was a very tight application. 
Uh, they've met their burden uh, throughout the application. They passed their live scan background checks. They are uh, essentially waiting for a decision on the use permit. Regarding the environmental review, there were some things that we found that could be potentially impacted, which are fairly standard for commercial cannabis. Uh, the first being air quality, the second being biological resources. Uh, I'll get my fingers to work. Third being cultural tribal, which is fairly standard, and the fourth being noise. And we've provided mitigation measures for each of those four categories. Regarding major use permit findings for approval, uh, we found that all six of the findings for approval found in Article 51, subsection 4A are met. I covered them in the prior application. I can go into detail on those if the commission would like me to. Um, finally, additional cannabis permit findings in Article 27. Uh, there were three of them. We found that all three of these were met. And consequently, our recommendation to the Planning Commission is four categories to a mitigation, mitigation, negative declaration IS 19 21 for use permit UP 19 10 and to approve use permit 19 10 uh, with the following findings. And the sample motions are found within page 17 of the staff report. And that concludes my presentation, unless more detail is needed on any of it. Thank you, Eric. Oh, uh, two things I wanted to add. Um, I was contacted by the uh, Middletown Rancheria tribe. The property falls within their purview. The applicant had actually met with Ryan Peterson, who is no longer with Robinson. And uh, Sally Peterson was unaware of the meeting held between Ryan and the applicant. Uh, the applicant signed uh, some type of an agreement with the tribe which Sally became aware of after she provided comments. So she's satisfied that this applicant is acting in good faith uh, to mitigate any potential cultural and native uh, impacts that could occur on the property. Um, I'm sorry, I lost the second part. Uh, it'll come back to me. Anyway, unless there are any questions, I've concluded the presentation. Eric, has uh, have you addressed the, the, everything that was brought up in the um, a, uh, agency comments? As far as I know, yes. Okay. I had thought I saw something, I don't see it now though, about BLM. Um, or was that? that back I don't recall if this or? site has to be traveled through BLM land to get to. I don't think it does, but let me take a look at the map that I've provided. I usually provide a zoning map showing. Uh, that might've been one of the other, other it. projects that we already. It, it could be, that's kind of a gray area right now because what I tell cultivators is if you have to travel through BLM land, do it at your peril because it's still a schedule one narcotic at the federal level and BLM is federally owned and maintained. And so they're kind of been the last one. on their own if they have to travel through BLM land to get to a property. I don't think that's the case with uh, this one. Right. But show a zoning map in here, so I can't confirm that. Mr. Chair, I remember that too. I think it was the Jerusalem Gold application, three of the four um, uh, okay. lots or whatever backed up to BLM land. <laughs> I, I recall reading that as well. Okay, well, sorry I missed it. No, there's a, a thousand foot separation that we have modified recently. It had been blanket thousand feet away from any public land, including BLM. Uh, you got to maintain the thousand foot setback. However, that was modified, I think, earlier this year. Right. By what public lands are candidate for that thousand foot setback? And land that's simply in public holding, uh, unless it's developed public land, is not. Uh, applicable to that thousand foot setback anymore. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Does anybody have any questions for Eric or for the representative of the applicant? No questions. 
No. I have no questions, Mr. Chair. I agree with Eric Porter that this is a really uh, tight and um, ex you know well well prepared application. I know Bobby Scala, and I've talked with him more than once about his original applications, and uh, right. he um, is in the right location for this kind of large grow, I think, and uh, has shown that he's a conscientious um, grower. Yep. I thought it was a very, very thorough application myself, too. Well, in that case, are we done with public comment? No, we have to take a break now. <sighs> the only we break have, I'm taking county, is a lunch break. We have county employees. She has to take her lunch break. I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay. Um, I move that the Planning Commission find that the initial study IS19-21 applied for by Morgan Valley Ventures LLC on property located at 22800 and 22520 Morgan Valley Road, Lower Lake, and further described as APNs 012-010-82, 012-069-59, and 012-069-60 will not have a significant effect on the environment and therefore mitigate a mitigated negative declaration shall be approved with the findings listed in the staff report dated October 1st, 2020. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. And Commissioner Syndrome? Yes. Motion so carries. In regards to major use permit UP19-10, I move that the Planning Commission find that the use permit UP19-10 applied for by Morgan Valley Ventures LLC on property located at 22800 and 22520 Morgan Valley Road, Lower Lake, and further described as APNs 012-010-82. 012-069-59 and 012-069-60 does meet the requirements of section 51.4 of the Lake County Zoning Ordinance and the major use permit be granted subject to the conditions and with the findings listed in the staff report dated October 1st, 2020. I'll second. Was that a second? It was. Yes, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. You get a roll call vote. Commissioner Hess? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Commissioner Brown is absent. Commissioner Price? Yes. And Commissioner Syndrome? Yes. Motion so carries. All right. I'd like to note the applicant or any interested person is reminded that the zoning ordinance provides for a seven calendar day appeal period. If there is a disagreement with the Planning Commission, an appeal to the Board of Supervisors may be filed. The appropriate forms and applicable fee must be submitted prior to 5 p.m. on or before the seventh calendar day following the commission's final determination. All right. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, guys. That concludes. Item number five. Item number five, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just pretend we've heard everything else and go home. Um, is there any um, office news or in un un any other untimed stuff? <laughs> yeah, I, I have about a 30 minute presentation. Uh, Come on, like <laughs> you're killing me right now. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. No, I'm, I'm joking. It's all right. I'll I, uh, settle for 30 over 90, so. Yeah. I, I just, um, i just like to thank all of the commissioners today uh, for your patience and indulgence. Um, we, um, we're working on getting better. And I know it doesn't, uh, I know that today certainly didn't reflect that um, with, with some of the issues that came up, uh, but um, we, uh, we're, it's a work in progress and, and I just, I really appreciate your patience and, and again, your indulgence and, and, uh, we, uh, we're, we're getting there and, uh, I, it's, it's just going to take some time. We're undoing some things, uh, and, uh, all I can just 
promise you is that uh, we we are working very hard to get better. Our staff is growing. Our staff is is learning and training, and and they're getting better. And um, uh, you know, our our goal uh, is to make uh, not only bring you a lot of projects to review, but our projects are solid and and thorough. And um, again, just really appreciate your patience. And I hope you all enjoy uh, the holiday and uh, stay safe. So thank you again. Thank you, Scott. You, Scott. Same to you, Scott. And Trish, I must say, has made the transition seem pretty seamless so far. Yes. Thanks, Trish. Thank yeah, you. very much. A absolutely. Um, you know, one of the one of the mantras, one of the things that I uh, I and Takara are really pushing is is that we are a team and. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to step in and 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 uh, do a role, do your job, uh, take on something else, a different challenge to to make the operation continue to work. And and Trish is a perfect example of that, and and uh, is very very well respected and and greatly appreciated in the department. So uh, thank you for acknowledging her, and and thank you, Trish, for uh, another job well done today. <laughs> Huh? I ran out of coffee hours ago. <laughs> I already processed it. Thank what? you, thank Does you, that Scott. That conclude everything. Uh, no. Yeah, I, I'm, my, my, that concludes my 30-minute presentation. I, I took Takara. I got that a little quicker. I, didn't but Takara, thank you. She said she had a 65 or 70-minute presentation. It's 120. Oh man. <laughs> I'm gonna tap out right now. Okay. All right. Let's uh. What's the agenda, baby? Agenda. Well, agenda. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, right. conclude agenda. the final planning commission meeting of 2020. 2020. It, it may also possibly be my last, so. Stop saying oh, that would oh. be a real loss, man. Well, we'll see, but it's been great working with you guys. If I don't see you on on January. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> In January. Uh, all right, let's adjourn it. Happy holidays, everybody. You yeah, too. you too, John. Bye. Stay safe.